Hey everybody, Phil here. In this extra long video, we have a compilation of all of the biggest pots that I've reviewed on this YouTube channel to date, plus a fun treat. I hope you enjoy it. Without further ado, let's get into the hands. For the first time on this channel, I'm gonna look back at some No Limit Hold'em hands. We're going back to 2014, full tilt poker, 300, 600, that's a 60K buy-in. No Limit Hold'em six max. I haven't seen how these hands play out. So uh, let's see what happens. So as we look around the table here, this is a really tough table. Uh, a lot of well-known players who are actually more known for mixed games, but should be pretty strong in No Limit Hold'em as well. Post-flop action, Alex Kostritsen to my right, to his right, polarizing, that's Phil Ivey. The man, the myth, the legend, to his right, Nikki Jedlica, which is his actual name. Crazy Elior, Elior Scion to his right, and Sam Rostan. I've got a few tables going here. This particular table, this is the lineup, but you will see some other lineups as we get going. I bought in for 30K here, I have 30K. I'm a little surprised by that. I rarely would play short. It might've been that I was spread pretty thin, uh, my account balance this day. But anyways, without further ado, this is every hand where I saw the turn. So if open the button, ace seven off, Crazy Elior calls in the big blind, decide to check this flop back, which is not particularly good for my range. Um, not particularly bad, but um, check seems fine. He bets two thirds. I mean, I think it's probably a fold. It's not the craziest call in the world. It looks like I did make the call. So the reason I make this call is I think he's gonna have a lot of potential gut shots to choose from. Any three, any four, obviously, you know, seven, eight, seven, nine, nine, eight. He'll have his flush draws, but but also I don't think he's betting a six. I don't think he's betting a five. He might not. And then as far as Jack X, like if he has a Jack, I think oftentimes he'll check to check call. If he has two pair or better, I think he'll often check to check raise on this Jack overcard. So I guess I kind of felt he wouldn't have a lot of value and he would have a lot of semi bluffs. So I made this call. I've talked myself into a call in present day. He checks river. Interesting. So it could be that he was making a bet with something like 6-4. It could also be that he was bluffing with something like 10-3 and river to 10 and didn't feel like he could value bet anymore. Um, I'm not going to turn a seven into a bluff here because I do also have those, you know, queen three suited and seven, nine of diamonds, things like that to choose from. So just check back. He did have king nine of diamonds. I think he should probably check turn. It's just a little bit too much showdown value to start bluffing with. There you go. Uh, Post-flop action raises a small blind. He's probably going to be, uh, he applies a lot of pressure. Uh, I, I wouldn't say the most pressure on this. We have some aggressive players on this table. Basically him, Phil Ivey and Nikki Jedlica are all pretty aggressive. But I defend the big blind with king five offsuit. He bets half pot. I think it's probably just a fold and call with a backdoor flush draw. <laughs> I decided to raise. I have no idea why. I was a lot more of a field player back in 2014 and, and earlier. Uh, I guess I still kind of am a field player, but this is a really, really a field play. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Like take a hand like nine, seven suited and raise, or even nine, four suited and raise with a backdoor flush draw. Sure. But King five, he's just calling all better hands and folding all worse hands. So I don't get this. He calls, he checks the turn. I think I should check this back. It's not the worst bet because everything from the flop gets there, but not having a heart, I don't know. I think it's just a little too ambitious. He does call. Now I think I should barrel off. Four is pretty interesting. Yeah, I think having no hearts in my hand, it's just hard to raise this flop and not have something. The four is unfortunate. Had I rivered, had the river been a three, now I have all the flop two pair, but now actually ace three, is too thin to jam. And I'm not raising flop with ace four or eight four or three four. And I may or may not bet the turn with four X. So the four is not a great river. Um, I go either way here, decided to check and lose to eight seven. I think probably river jam would have worked. Although it was 2014, people were doing a lot of hero calling. It wasn't so much based on, you know, uh, where we're at in our range. Okay, so I think what was happening, this is a short stack table. It looks like, I think what was happening is a lot of tables were popping up and people were buying in short and then kind of running it up and one or two players were jumping around. Here we see um, Isildur join the mix. This hand, he he opens with 24 big blinds or 20, I don't know, you know, you know math. Uh, I think it's just to get in with eights. He jams, we call, we probably gonna win the second one. Wow, we win both against ace king. King, queen off. So yeah, I like calling here. Raising would be okay. 
as literature comes along in a big blind, we whiff the flop, we face a big bet. This is just a fold. It's not the craziest hand to do something with, but you have to be pretty careful against these over half pot bets and three way pots. Looks like I called. Isildur calls as well. Uh, Jack on the turn. Yeah, Victor, this is a good lead from Victor just because when he over calls, first of all, he's raising 4x on the flop. Um, so when he over calls, he has a lot of Jack X. And even though Nikki does as well, and I might as well, I just think Nikki and I are a little bit more likely to have a four than Isildur is. So I don't know. I like his lead, easy fold from me. He can obviously have some bluffs, but you know. All right, so if, this is a funny one. So this table just started. The small blind is Sam Rostan, the big blind is Isildur. Post-flop action has posted under the gun. Oh, I guess it didn't just start. What happened? But post-flop action has posted under the gun. And Phil Ivey has posted under the gun plus one. <laughs> uh, and Phil Ivey's going to raise. This is actually kind of tempting to slow play because it's a really funny spot where um, post-flop action is supposed to be really weak. Ivy's going to be weaker than usual because he's got that dead money in there now. And there's the 600 in the middle dead money. So he might raise a ton here. And so if I just call, I feel like this is the type of table that pounces on that. So I wouldn't mind... Uh, just calling here with aces, but uh, three bet is more standard. Okay, I just called. I like that. I think this is the table to do that at. Like Nikki, Isildur, and post follow action are all the type to make that read. That like if I had a good hand, I would just raise. And this seems a lot more like a like a jack ten suited or nine eight suited for me. Um, so I think this is the table for this play. Any table is a good table to flop an overfull. Phil Ivy checks. So I can obviously bet my hand. I decided to check. I mean, I don't, I don't remember why I decided to check in 2014. But what I'm thinking now is Ivy's got a really weak range. And so keep in mind we're multi-tabling and it's hard to keep all these thoughts together. But he might not be thinking that I know his range is super weak. And so when I check back, he might try to rep something later when he's going to have a lot of air that's check folding. Nikki's relatively aggressive. I block most of the aces. Um, so I do decide to check. Phil Ivy calls. So he's got like a weak ace, he probably has a weak ace. And Nikki probably has a bluff or an eight. I think I'd just call. And I mean, by the time I call, I'm saying I have a flush draw or an ace and, and one of us has an ace. So Nikki might start to get a little bit worried, but I don't think so. I think call is the play. And if he has an eight, the money's going in anyways. He checks back. So now basically Nikki had a, a flop bluff or potentially ace 10. And Ivy has a weak ace usually, or potentially a flush draw. This is the the range that I'm putting everybody on. And now I think I need to bet because I don't think Nikki's going to. And I think Phil Ivy either has a missed flush draw or a weak ace. And I want to get money from his weak ace. I think I should have bet small. Um, first of all, it gives somebody the option to bluff raise repping the straight or to value raise a straight, not that they're going to fold anyways. But I overcalled flop. It's really tough for me to have a bluffing hand here. So uh, like going big, I just think this looks like I have a big hand. I, I, I don't like the jam there. Yeah, they're both going to fold. So I think that's a mistake. I think I was getting greedy. Uh, but small bets were not as much of a thing back then. All right, Isildur raises, Ivy calls. I don't know if this is a call on the big blind, but we do call with queen eight. Checked around, we turn an eight. This is a pretty reasonably, this is a reasonably good bluffing hand. With a diamond, it gets better. I decide to check. And now I think just check and showdown and probably lose, but you never know. Isildur has jack six suited, Ivy threes, and I'm gonna win with my eight. Um, that's not an open pre. All right, so Elior raises cut off this hand, probably just call, uh, especially from the big blind, from the small blind, I do more three betting from the big blind. I would have more polarized three betting range. Shout out to Phil Ivey's screen name, easy check call on this flop. He's going pretty big, which is not as much of a thing. And uh, he's going big here. And I don't know. Um, I know that at the time my read on Elior was that he was not very aggressive. And so I view this as a little bit scary. Um, he's going to have to have kind of something to keep betting here. I don't think he's the type to just barrel 10-10 with a spade. So we need him to have, like he's not going to have 10-9 offsuit, maybe 10-9 offsuit pre. 
queen nine off super free. That's all we can hope for, really, I think, for a bluff. Uh, I'm exaggerating, but I think but you have to keep in mind it's 2014. Nobody's that good. Um, and I do kind of think that uh, he's going to struggle to find enough bluffs here. So I like the fold. Also, I mean, he bet big on the flop. All right, so this hand I should not be seeing a flop with, but I sneak on in there with 6-4 suited. I flop a gut shot. Same last hand bet. Sizzler calls. I mean, I have four clean outs. I'm 10% to hit the turn. I need 20% to call. And I guess I have a little bit in the way of implied odds, so I like calling here. Obviously, I could raise, but I, I prefer the call. And uh, now just fold. All right. Plus slump action raises. Ivy calls. Clear call. Um, okay. Uh, so I decided to bet. I mean, this is not a good bet. I'm sure I made the read that... So this does often happen where... The preflop raiser bets a lot of their good hands. This did often happen. It probably does in low stakes games these days. Preflop raiser bets a lot of their good hands. Then when they don't, the second player to act, Phil Ivey in this case, is likely to bet with a hand like sixes to kind of clear up equity and, and take down the pot or, you know, sixes are better basically. And so I think Ivy's often weak. I think uh, post-flop action, uh, Alex is often weak. And so I go for the stab. I, this is not the right hand to choose. Terrible hand. Both players call. I turn a nine. Okay, so <laughs> this is a bad turn bet. Um, I guess I felt like it was unlikely that somebody was going to call with. So what do I think? I think post flop action is check calling with like a five and Ivy has sixes and I'm getting value and protection here. I don't know. It's a bad bet. I should check the turn. Um, I get one call. I wonder, was I this advanced? Um, I'm, I wonder, no, because I would go a little bigger. Basically, I was going to say, I wonder if I bet a little bigger here, could potentially make post-flop fold a hand like queen jack. And then Ivy could either, f like, here, because he has to worry about both of us. And then Ivy could call with a hand like ace five if he doesn't believe me, or he can call with a king ten of spades or something, something else that I beat, some kind of draw. So if I bet something like 10K here, I would kind of like, well, I wouldn't like it still, but it would be uh, more reasonable. Oh, I rivered two pair. So he doesn't have queen 10. He doesn't have 10, seven, unless they're spades, um, which I'm already, I already lose to spades. So I, I basically only lose to spades and jack eight. It's going to be very rare. Uh, he will have jack eight suited pre and play it this way potentially, but I think it's a clear value bet. Uh, so I go for two thirds. Looks good to me. He calls with the jack ten. Okay, we take down a nice pot. Okay, call the big blind. King seven offsuit. We flop top pair. Easy check call. Ace on the turn. He checks back. It's hard to make much money here when you call a big bet on king ten three rainbow and the ace hits. Like there's not much air left. But I could have jack nine. I could have queen nine. I could have three x. It turns it into a bluff. So I kind of like going for a small bet here. I decided to check. Hit queens, okay. Aces, we're gonna three bet. What are stacks here? Full stacks, we three bet. Isildur is gonna put in the four bet. I think this is just a call, especially against him. He's he's very willing. I don't like this shove. I think it's a mistake. But we do get it in, presumably good. He has ace king, too bad for him. I mean, sometimes you do jam aces, but I don't know, unless I had a really strong feeling that he just had it. He's just a great candidate to let let barrel off with C bets. He's he's very into C betting. All right, me versus Ivy, blind versus blind. I open 10-5 suited, which is iffy. I go for a big C bet on this board. I guess that's not that bad. <clears throat> he calls the big C bet. Turn nine, I decide to check. He bets. So first of all, this is a tough spot. So my reads on Ivy at the time, he's very aggressive in a spot like this with any pair. So he's betting any pair for protection. Also against turn C bets, he's pretty aggressive here with pairs in terms of like, he'll raise a lot of nine X, he'll raise some semi bluffs, but he'll, I could also see him raising a hand like sixes uh, just to get some protection and make, uh, like put me in a tough spot, make the hand easier to play. And so my options are not great with my hand. I think I probably should have bet 
but given that I didn't, I checked. This is pretty awkward because I need almost 30% equity. I'm gonna hit a flush, you know, 20% of the time. And a 10 might be good, five could be good. It's rare that I have the best hand, but it's possible. It's just a pretty weird spot. Um, let's see, I decided to raise. So hmm. the tough thing about this spot and the reason why Ivy makes all these bets with like king three and pocket fours on the turn is that uh, there's not a lot I can do about it because do I really wanna make a big raise like this with kings? Which then by the time he calls turn and calls river are not gonna be in that great shape. And so I feel like I, basically I feel like I don't rep much. I rep a nine. And would I do this with a nine against him? Yes, I think he's a great candidate to do that against uh, because I think he'll kind of bet everything on the turn when check two, everything in air quotes, uh, because not literally everything, but I think he'll have a really high betting frequency on the turn. This is 2014 Ivy. I haven't played with him uh, recently at No Limit Hold'em. Um, but then he's not going to believe me uh, here. So he calls as, as I, as 2023 Phil expects. And I river a 10. And this is actually really interesting because I wouldn't want to, well, would I? Maybe against him, I do want to start just check raising kings and, and jacks and stuff because I think it'll just call down enough. But anyways, now that I've gotten here, I guess I could check fold, but it's actually not inconceivable that he would just, you know, would he value jam worse hand? I don't think so. Anyways, check folding feels uncomfortable, uh, but I could check fold. The question is, am I good often enough to value bet? Is he gonna call with worse than a 10 often enough for me to value bet? And I think he might. If he has, yeah. So there are two nines out there. There are one, one deuce, one three. He'll have some pocket pairs over the three as well. He'll have some ace high, ace five even. I guess that by the time he calls a check raise a little, no, he might. Um, anyways, I think it's a jam actually. It looks like that's what I did. Yeah, I like the jam. Obviously sometimes I'm running into a better hand, but I think I'm often not. And uh, I think he won't believe this very much. So I like it. He actually folded. So I did have the best hand, but he did believe it or he missed a flush draw as well. All right, Nikki opens an early position. I defend the big blind. Flop very well, he checks back. Turn very well as well. Could go either way, I could bet this or check this. He's gonna have some under pairs to the jack, although he might bet a lot of those on the flop. But what's he calling a big bet with that's not betting itself? I don't know, I kinda like, in 2014, I think I like a check raise. Yep, there we go. Unfortunately, he folds. But the, re the reason I like a check raise in 2014 is I just, just think he's going to bet every pair, every two pair hand here, and then a lot of draws. And if I make a big bet and he doesn't have two pair or a draw, he's not going to call. So, uh, you know, with a couple exceptions. So I go in for the check raise and I can get more money that way. Uh, here we three bet ace king offsuit against Phil Ivey. We're three betting in an amount that kind of commits us against his short stack. Uh, but not necessarily if others jam. He jams, we have an easy call with ace-king, and we lose to Jax. Phil Ivy only runs it once, if you didn't know that. Uh, defend the big blind, king-jack offsuit, flop nothing, check-check flop. <clears throat> I don't know why I did this. It just doesn't seem good, <laughs> but I did. Uh, I should probably keep betting if, if I bet this turn, but uh, just blocking no draws, but instead I check fold. I don't know what that turn bet was. Uh, raise jacks, is little calls in the small blind. Easy check back, I think. Close on the turn. I kind of like checking back now, but I probably bet. All right. Defend the big blind, ace five off. Easy check down, easy continue to check. Checks down sixes, which is... You might want to bluff that on River. Um, but he was definitely, he, he under bluffed in these games. That's one of his leaks, in my opinion. Ace eight suited, usually call this. I guess you could three bet. <clears throat> We're deep. We're 200 big blinds deep. No, 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 Phil. I need to just fold to, to two thirds pot with Ace eight in the back door. So that's a bad call. And uh, now I wasted some money and I get to fold the turn. Hey, T-Rex. So I call a raise, get check two. Yeah, 
I like the check back. Uh, check back once again. Like I'm often winning against an ace high or some kind of uh, smaller pocket pair, but he he also has you know jack tens nines. Um, no, this is a terrible bet. I don't like this bet, and because I'm just making all worse hands fold and better hands call. So now I'm probably going to lose a showdown. Seven ten of hearts, well played by him. Um, open under the gun with jack ten suited. We are deep, uh, two hundred big blinds deep. I thought we were deeper because my stack is deeper. So I call this hand. I mean, I think you have to call, but he is making it pretty big, and we are under the gun, under the gun plus one. I think you like have to have jack ten suited in your range somewhat, but uh, just for board coverage and stuff this deep. But it's not a thrilling spot. I could also four bet, of course, but wouldn't do a lot of that. Uh, flop top pair. He bets big. I'm gonna call. No, Phil, what are you doing? <laughs> I actually remember this hand. So I thought to myself, <laughs> I remember what I thought. I thought, all right, well, this is going to get uncomfortable. But if I check raise, so instead of calling 10K, I check raise to 25K. And then I check the turn. He's going to get scared and check back kings. That's what I thought. Now, would he or would he not? I don't know. Um, but I did raise and he did call. And with the queen on the turn, I decided to check. He checked back. Maybe it's going according to plan. And the 10 on the river, I don't remember what he had. I remember what I was thinking, which is funny, but I don't remember what he had here. Um, so ace king beats me. That's about it. I mean, if he has king nine or nine eight of spades. But ace king, king nine, nine eight of spades. I don't think he has tens very often for this line. Maybe never, and I block 10. So I guess I have the best hand. So I guess I should just make a big bet and hope that he calls with kings that I scared him into checking back or aces that I scared him into checking back according to my plan, but he does fold. So, I mean, he could have had that, but I don't know. Um, probably just had ace jack. I don't know. I have no idea. We take it down. My plan worked. Defend the big blind, ace nine offsuit against under the gun min raise from Phil Ivy. Check, check. We're going to check turn. He's going to bet. I think it's just a fold. Now, like I have ace high, which beats bluffs and I have a gut shot, but he's raising under the gun. And so the, the number of hands that don't connect with this board, like does he have seven, six of hearts? Maybe, is he betting it? Maybe, but I, yeah, I just, I just don't beat. He just doesn't have enough hands to choose from as bluffs, I think. So I think that's a terrible call. We fold the river and that is the last hand. Let me know what you'd like to see more of. And subscribe if you'd like to see more of this or anything. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. By the way, if you are enjoying the strategy, I send my best insights out weekly via email. If you're interested in receiving those, head to philgalfon.com. Now back to the video. Hey everybody, Phil here. I'm going to look back at a 501k PLO session I played against Patrick Antonius heads out from 2011. So let's get going. I'm going to review the hands and talk about what I must have been thinking, how I like these plays today. Without further ado, let's dive in. So obvious three bet here with ace, ace, jack, jack. Um, so on this flop, nowadays, yeah, this sizing is fine. And I think this hand choice is fine. So I'm cool with this so far. He raises small, a little bit scary. Um, I think with ace, ace, jack, jack with backdoor spades, I'm not folding. Mm, I really dislike jamming. So he's going to be raising hands like... He'll have a couple of combo draws like ace king five maybe or king five four king queen five four but other than that he's either got like a set or two pair or a really low equity bluff so if he has a low equity bluff i don't need to be denying him equity here i can just call and he's not going to shove a low equity bluff on the turn unless he picks up something to go along with it so the right play is to call here if the turn is you know an offsuit seven and he jams i just fold my aces if the turn is a seven of spades and he jams, I'm calling it off. If it goes check, check, then I'm, I, I've got a lot of equity probably. So this is a bad jam. I really dislike it. Uh, hit an ace on the first and a jack on the second, but he did have king five, four. Um, we're gonna chop this pot. Three bet, jack 10, seven, five, double suited. I like it. Betting range on this board. Nowadays, I split into third pot and pot, but this is fine going with just the sizing get called this is actually a really tricky turn spot when you turn a pair you want to do a lot of betting when you turn a flush draw you want to do a lot of betting 
I just have a little bit of an awkward amount of equity to be betting. And I'm kind of forcing money in when he just has like king, queen, 10 with clubs. I'm forcing money in when he would have just checked that back. So I'm not really sure here. I think potting's probably got to be okay. Just what I do. Get just called. So he's saying he has a draw of some kind. Most likely he can obviously have ace seven, ace nine, waiting for a safe river. A uh, very clear jam here, which is what I do. And he folds. Call three bet, jack nine, seven, three. Not a beautiful hand, but seems fine. He bets very big. This is actually getting a little bit close against this bet sizing. I think if he bet 10K, it's a very, very, very easy call. I think it's probably still a call, but it's pretty close. This is awful. This is terrible. Never raise a hand like this. There's, uh, there were some fundamentals I just didn't get back in, when was this? 2011. Yeah, I mean, I think the leak here for me is being too hung up on how I'm doing against aces and I'm flipping against dry aces, but this is not a dry aces kind of situation. He shouldn't be potting dry aces here uh, or, you know, almost potting dry aces here. He might be, and maybe this is an adjustment to him betting, you know, too often with hands like this. And he has a little bit short or under 100 big blinds to start the hand, but just call and see a turn. Instead, we get it in. That's not going to be me. That's not going to be me. <laughs> he, <laughs> he did have dry aces. So, I mean, against that, I'm actually doing fine. Um, roughly a flip, but I'm not sure. I would have needed a strong read that that was the case to make that play. And even then, just call. All right, this is more like it. Three bet flop the super nuts. I don't bet any hands on this board. I don't get this bet. I must have... I might have been just c betting too much in general back then, and so I just c bet way too much on boards like this. Nowadays, this is a pure check board. I don't bet any hands. Getting to the turn like this, I kind of like continuing to bet because if he has a hand like ace deuce, he's reasonably likely to check. If he has a hand like five four, he's reasonably likely to check. I've already bet the flop, so I'm not really repping dry kings. Uh, so I think just rep the bluff and keep betting. So, okay, 0 for 2 so far. Uh, now on this river, I mean, here's the thing. If I was C betting 100%, which I don't think I was in 2011, then the turn check is good and the river check is good. I don't think I was doing that. So I think the problem with this line here, I'm repping like strength and a polarized range on the flop and then I'm checking the turn. So I'm repping air or a check raise. So I need to keep betting the turn. And now on the river, this is an excellent check raise spot in general, but again, I've repped either air or a really strong hand that wanted to get the money in on the flop. I think it's, I still want to check raise, but it's gets a little iffy. No, I bet big, get called by, rivered set. Um, yeah, I think this was badly played by me, uh, well played by him. Well, I need to check the flop for sure, but having bet the flop, I need to bet the turn. Three bet ace jack, eight seven, single suited. I'm surprised, I, I didn't know that I knew to three bet this back then, so that's good. Bet flop looks good, turn. A decent amount of equity. I actually think the play here is just to check call. I think that's what a solver would tell me to do. I'm sure I pot it. Yeah. He jams. I call it off. Will I hit? Yes, I will. Once. So we're going to chop this pot. He has a set of fives. Well played by Patrick. Clears three bet. Double suited. Queens. Small bet. Looks good. Check range on this turn. Mm, mostly. Yeah. Check call. And no diamonds, pretty interesting spot. I think he's probably gonna slightly under bluff here. So I'm, le uh, I'm leaning fold, but it, it wouldn't be a terrible call. Okay, we call, get shown jack deuce nine. He had all of it. See about flop. This would be a reasonable check back. You need to check back occasionally with nut plus draws. Um, I used to size, you know, too small. It should just be a pot or check. Well, pot or half pot or third pot or check spot. This sizing is not something I do and should pot the river as well. Call down with the second nuts. So I lost some value there by not potting. <laughs> I was getting a little frisky with this sizing. I mean, I should just pot. I don't know why I did this. I should just pot or just call. We're pretty, we're 150 big blinds deep, a little over. Um, I think I should just pot, but I didn't. Now he leads near pot. I have an easy call. I just ripped it in. This this is not as bad as some of these. So 
The reason this is not as bad is because he's probably not expecting a lot of raises here. Um, and so, well, a couple of things. He might not be expecting a raise, so he might be betting like a middling equity hand, ace, jack, 10, five, that is now in a really tough spot against this jam. But also he'll bet some combo hands that I actually have beat. And it is gonna be tough for me on the turn to navigate this spot and I can get it in okay on the flop. So I don't mind this play. I still just call today, but this is okay. Get it in. It's probably not gonna be us, nor is that. Okay, we won one of them. He had nine, eight, six, three with diamonds. Yeah, okay, that seems fine. Chop it up. Uh, call the three bet with queens. He bets big. This is, if I don't have the 10, I think this is just a fold. With the 10, it's close. I actually like folding, but I called. Don't know about this call. This is a bad call on turn. I just need to fold. And now I should check and show down, hopefully a winner, but uh, nope, he just had the super nuts. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a bad turn call by me. I think this is a case of overvaluing my blockers. So I'm like, well, he's repping queen jack and I block queen jack, so he's probably bluffing. But the problem is he doesn't need to just have queen jack. He can have king king, he can have 10 10, he can have like ace king jack 10 with spades. I'm just in bad shape against a lot of stuff. So bad turn call. And I don't think bluffing river makes sense, especially when I block queen jack. I'll bluff, like if I have 10 9, I can bluff here. This hand does not seem like a three bet. That's interesting. Um, I'm using all different sizings, which is funny. This time I half bought. Uh, so I guess back then I didn't have a lot of small bets. This hand I would small bet flop, small bet turn, and depending on the river, maybe bet a different size. Um, but not having small bets, it's fine to check. Now I should pot, but I'll just bet two thirds. It's fine. Yes, a king. For those of you watching who've only been around poker for a little while, a lot of these fundamental mistakes would be inexcusable today, but nobody, there were no solvers, so nobody knew the correct way to play. Uh, so I, I don't really view a lot of these as true mistakes, although some of them I do. Nice flop for me, I bet. In theory, you small bet your range here. I think I should check this hand if I don't have a small bet uh, sizing, but I went pretty big and now I need to check river and lose to kings. So I think, yeah, it's it's awkward when you don't have a small bet, uh, when you don't have a small sizing in your arsenal uh, to play this spot, because it really kind of needs a small bet. Three bet here, I kind of like check jamming this spot because betting and getting called turns get, obviously I have a very strong hand, but turns get kind of dicey for me. So I think I should have checked. Instead I bet, now I need to check and call. probably call down with a jack blocker and a six blocker. But he gives up with nine, five, three, three. Makes sense. Yeah, I think uh, this is well played by, uh, other than I think I should have check raised, I think this is well played by both parties. He doesn't want to be firing the river barrel, just blocking a five. Breaking on all the sizings, I min raise. Oh, I guess he's shorter here, so I decided to min raise. Um, all right, whatever. Bet flop, good, get check raised. I think let's, mm, I think just get it in now, especially the way it played back then. There was too much, like he's probably check raising, you know, eight, four plus a gut shot and stuff that I'm doing really well against. So I like getting it in. Nowadays, I think maybe it's just a call. Win against that. This play is okay, I would check call, but it's okay. Oh, I chop against that, excuse me. Three bet queens, he four bets. This is terrible. <laughs> I just need to fold. Instead, I ripped it in, which is the last thing you should do. Nice flop for me, but it's not looking good now. Okay, let's get half probably. Nope, get 0%. Um, bad play by me, pre-flop. Call three bet, flop very well. Good enough to raise, do I want to raise? Probably, it's it's like a really high equity hand now, but it's gonna be a little dicey on turns. I like raising small. Um, what if I just call? Okay. Now I need to call turn, but it's pretty ugly. And check and hope to win against a jack. Hit a wrap on the flop, so we're actually flipping there. Three bet against a min raise, looks good. 
I should just check my range on 665, but instead I bet he's raising. Just call. Good. Check, he's betting. I think I should just call. Um, the problem is he's not playing like kings this way. There's no thin value in this spot. So a six with a 10 kicker is is crushing his semi-bluffing range, especially, I mean, I, blo I block eight, eight, 10 and two spades. So like he's not gonna suck out very often. And, and sometimes when he does, I'll hit an eight, like he'll hit a straight and I'll, I'll hit an eight, for example. So yeah, I, I'm either drawing near dead or he's just folding a no equity hand or a low equity hand. So I don't really like that. A lot of mistakes in this session, unsurprisingly. Three bet, C bet's fine, I mean good. Check turn with my full range, pretty much. He checks back. Now I have the nuts. I unblock an ace. I mean, I think I should just check. Um, I'm not even sure if I need a betting range on this river. Um, let's check and go for the check raise. I went for a big bet. I mean, that's weird. I mean, unblocking mace can have a lot of two pair, but I think in this spot, he's going to bet any straight, including the deuce. So I can get the check raise in. Call with a set of threes, so it worked out. I'm shocked by this three bet. Um, back then, I mean, I, it's not a three bet. I also thought I was too tight with three bets back then, so I'm not sure what this is. <laughs> Uh, and now it's just a fold, but of course I flick in the call. A lot of mistakes. Uh, flop the wrap. My checky e pots. I can't fold, I think. There's not much left. So I don't know. I guess, like, I guess it's a little bit better to call and then hope it checks through on a deuce of diamonds or something, and I get to check fold the river or realize my equity. Um, but not a huge deal. And that one is not gonna go my way, I can guarantee it, and neither is that. So we, we missed the route twice against aces, although our eights were no good. So that's a, a big loss for me. Three bet, nice double pair, easy flop bet. This is good, uh, he's raising, let's get it in. He has queen with clubs. We're going to chop this pot. Oh, did he win? Oh, he won both because he hit queen five on the first board. So that's pretty ugly. Uh, I got it in essentially against a flush draw and lost twice. Open. Call the three bet. Standard thus far. Um, he checks. I mean, it's not the worst bet. He checks again. I need to check and try to show this down. That's a heck of a river. I should just be potting. I could have a half pot range of like kings if I just don't think he's, uh, if I think he's betting his aces or something like that, but I think I should pot. Otherwise he check calls with aces. Okay, and we did it. And actually I don't really hate any of my plays given the my kind of understanding at the time. This, this jack seven shove is probably my least favorite, but he was a little bit short and I was right <laughs> that he had aces, and maybe I, maybe there was a reason I was right. It's tough flying blind out there with no solver knowledge. This hand, I would have raised the flop, but otherwise played fine. I think he might need to bluff river with the jack. He's not going to win a showdown too often. And it's nice to block river two pair. This was a pretty big mistake. You don't really need solvers to tell you that he's repping a hand that I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, five outs against. Well, I guess a little better because of the flush draw. He's repping a hand that I don't have many outs against and when he's bluffing, I'm doing great. So I don't like this this jam. So I ended up losing 80K this session. If you look at my all in EV, I was actually supposed to win uh, 260K. So almost a 350K swing in, in all in EV. But I mean, that happens, that's three and a half buy-ins. It's really not much at all. Can't really fault Patrick for almost any of his plays there. I think I, I made more mistakes than him. Fun. It's always fun to look back at these. I, I'm getting nostalgic just seeing the full tilt replayer. You are about to watch me get demolished. The year is 2014. I'm living in Vancouver. I have my office upstairs in this nice little, almost like loft. I, I remember this vividly because it was one of the worst sessions I've ever had in my life. At the time, I'd been trying to get action against Isildur and he just wasn't giving me action or wasn't around. 
And all of a sudden I'm, I'm sitting in the lobbies at, at a bunch of tables. All of a sudden he sits with me at 300, 600. And I'm a little tired, it's late in the day, but I've been waiting for this opportunity. So I hop in. Today we're gonna look through every pot that was over 200 big blinds. So the interesting thing is we actually played almost 5,500 hands in this session. To give you some context, in a lot of my Galphon challenge matches, I was playing between 500 and 800 hands a day on two tables heads up. Here we played, I believe, four tables heads up and somehow got to 5,500 hands. Because of that, we have almost 60 pots of 200 big blinds or greater, which is insane. I'm gonna go through them fast because I don't wanna keep you here for hours. Buckle up, <laughs> let's get into the action. So 2014 is actually a point in my career where I think I'm kind of at my worst compared to the competition. I had launched Run It Once a couple of years ago. I was spending time on the business. We were trying to, to launch new things as well. I had met my now wife and girlfriend a couple of years ago. I was spending a lot of time with her, a lot of time away from the tables. This is, I believe, around the time that better tools start coming out. Well, for online poker in general, I don't know about PLO, what was out at the time, but certainly tools were out that I was not using. And my game had suffered a little bit. At the time, it, it wasn't really clear to me, but it's clear to me now. Despite this being not, well, I mean, it's still a long time. It's nine years ago. But I think my play is going to be kind of 2008 level. So we will see. As I mentioned, I'm going to try to breeze through these pretty fast. But if you have a question about an individual hand, let me know. All right, I raise the button. Call three bet. All good so far. He bets flop. Okay, this is terrible. So right off the bat, this is just bad. I, I don't know why I'm raising the flop with a hand that has just a very easy flop call. I'm getting it in really bad against a lot of hands. And I have playability I can just call. So this is terrible on the first hand. We get it in. And he has ace, ace, king, five. It's fine by him. Um, I think I know why I was raising. So I had this read on him that he was c-betting the turn in three bet pots a lot. And I just felt like I kept having to fold to his turn C bets. And so I just kept making these bad, I mean, presumably bad. I just know I would, I would raise a lot of flops. We'll see if they're bad. But I, I think probably I just made a lot of bad flop raises. Okay. Call three bet. Call C bet. So far, pretty good. He pots and he has 23K behind. Yeah, the jam is fine. Obviously I'm not thrilled, but I just have enough equity against his range and the rivers are not going to play that great. There's not a reason to, to wait till the river. Five on the first, king on the second run out. He had ace, queen, jack, jack. I mean, that's a little thin from him. And that's an example of like, he was just denying so much equity like that. Okay, three bet. Good, bet flop. Sure. Call the raise, good. I mean, bet flop is good. Call the raise is good. And I open jam. This is good for me. I like this line. Gets it in with queen five with spades, and he's going to win both. Okay, cooler. Defend the big blind. He bets 3K into 3.6. So I raised um, against a small bet. So this is a flop where you mostly bet small these days. So against a small bet, I could raise my hand, but it's not. It is close, um, and I usually don't. Against a big bet, you're definitely not supposed to raise a hand like this. So this is kind of bad. Turn, I bet big. This is, I mean, I'm putting too much money into the pot, but it's not the worst turn bet once I get here. And I need to just jam river. I have no idea why I'm checking. So like, he's going to have some six, seven, eight, and I don't know, aces with spades and stuff like that. I need to just jam. I think what I must have been thinking is that I know that at the time he, like, I felt like my image was a, a nitty image, although so far it doesn't seem like I'm being nitty, but he, I think he didn't think I would, I thought at the time that he didn't think I would bluff this river after this line. So I thought he'd make some big folds. So I decided to check this hand, um, obviously calling pretty happily, but run into three, six cooler, although I didn't need to raise the flop. Uh, checking this flop is okay. Um, no. So you check this flop to check call at this stack depth. I instead check potted. We're not short enough for me to pot this in because he's going to call and turns are going to be dicey. He just rip it in. 
he does rip it in, which is fine with me at this point. Probably getting it in flipping against his range. Uh, so bad check raise for me, bad jam from him. He should just call. There's a lot of just like gambling from both of us so far. Open the button, call three bet, flop three pair, just call. This looks good so far. Uh, stack is a little over 2x pot and he pots, so very easy jam, I hope. Yep. He calls. And not the best rivers. He has king queen. We chop it up, I think. Yeah. Call three bet. Looks good. Flop a wrap with a diamond. This is not a this is not a flop raise. This is a terrible flop raise. I don't even have an explanation. I mean, the explanation I gave is probably why I did it, because I was didn't want to see the five of or mm, the six of spades turn and then see a pot bet. But just deal with that. This is so bad. I'm gonna win the first one. I'm gonna lose the second one. There's Jack nine five. Okay. He definitely applies a lot of pressure. Okay, call three bet, call C bet looks good. Call turn bet looks good. Or fine at least. And uh, call river jam, obviously. Not flush. I mean, that hand's not a three bet, so he was three betting pretty wide. Call three bet. How does this pot get big? Well, that's how. <laughs> uh, don't raise this hand on the flop. I should have a raising range and I should have a lot of bluffs, but I need more equity than this. I'm sure I just thought ace blocker, queen blocker, etc. He calls, turn the queen, so now I can take my hand to showdown. And he pots the river. This is not the worst call, but I think it's probably bad because he's not gonna bluff with fives or better. And he's just gonna have fives or better a lot when he three bets and then bet calls flop. Yeah, I'll have some missed flush draws, but not enough, I think. He has full house. Call three bet, flop a set. Hopefully I don't screw this one up. Yeah, I like just calling. And definitely call turn against a little over half pot. And call the jam, Let's see what he has. Nine seven, so just a just a gut shot. This is not a three bet preflop either, um, and pretty loose flop and turn play. Three bet flop two pair. He bet he calls. Um, this is a tough spot. It looks like I just potted in to avoid any dicey spots. He jams. I think I have to call, but I don't know. Maybe not, honestly, even with those pot odds. 10 river, five river, he just turns top set. So I'll lose that 120K. I mean, my play's fine. I was in very good shape on the flop. Standard three bet. I, I never check this flop these days, but if I did, it'd be a reasonable checking hand. Check call, turn the nuts. I think check call, but raising's not the worst against him. Obviously call it off on the river when he jams and he has the same hand. So we chop that up, unfortunate. Although he was ahead on flop. So three bet, this check call I like, I could bet, but check call's good. Turn the nuts again on a rainbow straight board again. Definitely check call here. My, my range is doing really poorly here. Let's let him bluff, call it off, looks good. He just has the nuts again. So we split that. Um, okay, three bet, call four bet, seems okay. This is going in, sure. I don't think open, I mean, I could actually just open that flop, although he's gonna stab some like ace, five, six, seven and fold. So yeah, I, li I like uh, check raise. Mm, I probably lose that. Don't know about that. Chop it up. Call three bet. <laughs> you're not supposed to do this. This is another one that you're not supposed to do. It's not the worst, especially because he's three betting so light. 
Although actually that, that gives more two pair on this board. It's not the absolute worst. I don't really like it. it if he's C betting way too much, which it seems like he might be, this is actually okay. But it's a little loose. Let's see what we get it in against. That's a pretty bad run out. It's a not great run out. He has ace, king, five, deuce, double suited. Standard from him. We'll chop that pot up. Nice flop for me after calling a three bet. I mean, I do I think he's really pot folding here? Maybe maybe he was, in which case this is okay because like I'm, my equity is fine against everything, but I think it's just a call. Uh, most people don't pot fold on this board with this stack depth. So 142K pot, miss the first, hit the second. We chop it up against two pair. All right. Good three bet. I mean, I bet range on this flop. Um, if I check, I like check raising, not check call. Well, it's not the worst, but I should just bet flop. And now I rip it in. He has king three. Um, he gets there on the first. He's got the open ender too, so we chop this up. Um, pretty standard-ish from him. He could check flop, but probably bet is good. Not great for me, but not the worst. Good turn bet. Call the raise. <laughs> um, I mean, like, to, to three bet jam here on the turn, I have to think that he's really bluffing a lot, which people are not doing. Like, even, I think I just, he was so aggressive that I had a misconception of what he was doing. But he was just aggressive with, like, yeah, some bluffs, but a pretty strong range. And he was like reasonably foldy and passive when he had a weak hand. So, or like, a, you know, the weaker portions of his range. So this is just kind of suicidal. I mean, my clubs are reasonably often going to be good. I have a wrap. It's not like I'm burning a ton of equity, but it just seems unnecessary. Like he needs to be folding a lot for this to be good. And we get there once. Yeah. Wow, we were in bad shape. He had the 10-8 with turn set. Um, good so far. He bets. Um, it's fine. I don't think I could fold against him. Although I am, I mean, I'm really repping 5-5. Five five, so if he has queen 10 with something, he shouldn't really get it in, but he might. I think I should just call, but ripping the rest in, this is not totally, I don't know. This is too much money to get in in theory, certainly. And um, like the raise is dicey. What to do against the three bed is not, I, like, I, I think it's just a call, but this is, you know, it's like a few dicey decisions, but nothing terrible. Um, I do block queens and sixes, but he does have sixes anyway. So that's too bad. Raise, I would check this on the flop, but the bet's fine. Definitely calling the check raise, good. Glad to see I didn't rip it in there. Um, good. Glad to see I didn't rip it in here either. Although this actually would not be the worst spot to rip it in because he might have like a stronger flush draw plus pair that folds. And even if he, like if he has ace eight dry or if he has seven seven dry, he might fold to a jam here. So actually, this would be a reasonable spot to jam with a five high flush draw and a wrap that just turned the extra three outs with the threes. Good river. Um, do I raise or just call? I think he's probably not potting a set anymore. Maybe he is. I don't know. It's not much more. The raise seems fine. He has the nuts. Um, is he folding the turn to pot? I don't know. Probably not. Oh, sorry. I went kind of fast there. He had a flopped open ender plus not flush draw. And uh, river the straight, a higher straight. Call three bet. Call. <laughs> this is this is really bad, really really bad. This is maybe the worst one yet. It's definitely closer to a fold than a raise, um, but it should just be a call. I really, I mean, it's I'm surprised at how much worse I am here than in a session I recently reviewed from 2010. Like in 2010, I was better than this. And this is 2014. So I regressed. Call, check raise is good. Against the three bet, 
I don't think I can fold. And I think just being out of position, I think just ripping it in now is probably good. Cool. It's fine. He has that. So I was in bad shape, but I, I don't mind my line. You're not thrilled once he three bets, but you just have too much equity. And like against his betting range, you're doing great. So the check raise is good. Call three bet, flop top two, rip it in. This one's a little more reasonable. Um, still probably call today, but it's not, it's not the worst. He calls, saving 23K. He jams 20, well, 24K and on the turn, I have to call. And he had that. So queen, queen, four, four. So bad flop call from him, I think. Or, I mean, it's definitely bad in theory. I was raising open, dry open enders though. So it was probably good in practice against me. Yeah. All right, I won one. It's exciting. Call three bet. Call C bet. I was going to be very sad if I raised that. He's potting. Um, the kind of interesting thing, I'm just like trying to put myself back then. So like these boards, when the straight turns, I was betting way too much in position, like way too often. And so I I think like he, he might check a lot of good hands here. I guess I'm wrong. Is he called? No. Okay. So he had the, the combo draw. So a good jam-ish for me back then. I could also call though and fold club rivers and, and call it off on bricks. Okay, good. Call three bet, call C bet, call turn. It's really interesting that he's sizing down here on the turn. So he's three quarters on the flop or a little less. And he's just over half pot on the turn on the ace. When like all of his sets can keep betting big, I think. Well, yeah, he doesn't have Jack 10, I think when he sizes down. I know I have a full house, but I don't think I beat anything that's value betting. He definitely could bluff here a lot though. And like even like King 10, 10 might play this way. Okay, he's queen. That's why he sized down, interesting. I mean, he's bet so big on the flops that, um, just check rip this. So if he's stabbing this flop way too much, which he might be, then this seems okay. Like it's pretty loose to get in, but Reasonable equity against two pair, decent equity against combo draws, and uh, a lot of fold equity, presumably. First one's going to be mine. That's nice. Second one, I have a chance against 9-7. Have 9-7. His get in on the, like his flop bet is whatever. His jam on the flop against my race seems pretty bad. Um, he's in a tough spot though, but okay. Good three bet, uh, C bet range, but I decided to check. Now check call is good. He's going to stab this board a lot. Check call is good again. And looking to call it off, which we do. He has the set. Um, I think this is going to be, I mean, once I check flop, it's very standard for me, and I think I'm going to do pretty well. And actually, he could have a six for value. Okay, single raise pot. Very bad C bet for me. Don't do this. It's just... The wrong kind of hand. And I'm supposed, <laughs> I'm assuming I didn't fold because this pot's going to be big. Uh, I think I should fold to the raise once I bet. So two bad plays for me. Now we turn something. And so this call is justified. And easy jam. 10 high flush. He calls with set with a heart. Pretty good. Uh, he should check call flop, but not the worst, but standard from him. Otherwise, I think. Call three bet. Okay, I suspected I might do this. I mean, it's not ridiculous just in that if he's C betting way too much stuff, but he's probably not folding any over pairs. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Hit a straight on the second one. He just has ace, ace, four. So I mean, I'm kind of flipping ish, but use my position. I don't know. Once, whatever. Um, here I should raise flop. Just too much equity, I think. I just call, turn boat, easy call. Let's see what he has. Easy call down with nine five. And he was bluffing. So that worked out well. I think I raised, should raise flop, but not a big deal. And then the rest looks good. Four bet aces. C bet. So this C bet's too big. I don't need to bet this big. It's not way too big, but it's a little too big. He jams. I mean, I don't think I can fold. He's going to have like a bunch of Jack 10 type combos. And, you know, 
Yeah, he has a queen a lot, but don't think I can fold. He has queen nine. You should consider calling queen nine there, but it worked out. Flop the super nuts, easy call. I guess, so a little deeper, I would raise this. Here, I think I just call again. Man, maybe it's a raise. I don't know. He checks. What does he have? A give up, I guess. No, because he has to put more money in. So he check calls. Um, I don't really know what this would be. Okay. Um, pretty good line by him, actually. Makes sense. Uh, he's right to not value by river, especially blocking the kings. Okay, easy call of the three bet. <laughs> uh, this is terrible. I mean, I'm doing the same thing again and again. This is just terrible. Um, obviously, I call it off once I raise, but I just need to call flop. This is dumb. He's got some weakish holdings, but I'm not making him fold. A lot of, I don't know. We're seeing all the hands that, that were big. So maybe he was folding a lot of flops and some of this stuff was working, but it doesn't seem right. I could check call, but check raise is good. I don't like the turn check. I should just bet. Obviously now I'm jamming pretty happily. Queen deuce with diamonds. So yeah, his flop bet's kind of whatever. Call the raise is good. Turn bet is probably good. So reasonable from him. Okay, pretty weak hand, but raise and call three bets. Okay, he's betting big. I mean, I think I still have to call an open ender, but it's not entirely clear. It's pretty dicey spot on a wet board like this. Turn the second nuts with a redraw. I think given the way he's playing, I just need to rip it in. Spades aren't good. Oh, he had the same hand, <clears throat> but he uh, on the second run out hit eight six for the full house. So he'll take three quarters. Mm, I think it's just a call pre. Now facing the four bed, I don't know. It's maybe a call. This is bad. Just check flop. If I do want to have some bets on this flop, I think I go smaller. And this hand is just, it's just bad. This is a really bad hand to be betting. So I'm going to fish. Oh, hit two flushes and one. He flopped the nuts. Yeah, bad play. Like, because you're going to, the flop's going to go check, check a lot. You're going to get to realize your equity a lot. And he's going to bet small a lot and you can just check all. So you don't have to, it's not like you're putting stacks in or getting denied equity a bunch. Uh, so call a three bet, bet flop, which is fine with this hand. He calls, turns some outs, good check, river trips, good bet. And he raises, I mean... I think I need a call against him, basically. I, I don't feel bad about this one. I lost, which I assume I did because I lost every hand this session. <laughs> Defend the big blind. Check call looks good. Check call turn looks good. Check raise river, obviously, with the nuts. He calls, so he's got a flush. Second nuts for him, pretty standard cooler. Okay, what happened here? I raise pre, he donked flop. I forgot that he was doing this, but he was doing a lot of this. Man, I, it'd be fun to go back into his stats and figure out how, to, how I'd exploit him now, but I, it's gonna take, it's like a four hour project. <laughs> um, it'd also be fun to go into my stats and see how to exploit me because I was playing terribly. Uh, so calling a flop is good and raising the churn now, good. Okay, he calls. I mean, I don't know why I bet three quarters just pot river. Calls, what does he have? Under like six, six, wonderful. Jack deuce with diamonds, okay. If you have a donking range, I think his flop donk is good and turn bet is good and call if the raise is good. And it's, yeah, it's all fine once he, if you have a donking range. So well played hand by both of us, assuming you let him have a donking range. Easy check call on the flop. Sorry, I go too fast. When I review hands, I just speed through them. Anyways, check call, standard with pair plus open ender. I turn the nuts. He's betting big. Just call here, don't raise, good. It's not enough of a redraw in this spot. And he pots, I raise. 
he calls probably a chop it is a chop a lot of split pots um this is a bad three bet and this is a bad check <laughs> i just don't you don't need to check anything on jack 10 line but i guess i didn't have a small sizing and if you don't if you don't have a small sizing then sure you can check the, this board sometimes um i like my turn check after he checks back flop because i think he starts betting like he jack six and stuff like that so he bets i raise it's a little too big to raise i think but it's okay that's fine he rips it in he shouldn't really jam anything here i think but he does what does he have okay i win um his flop play and turn play well his flop play is good his turn bet is pretty good although he could check that back but he should not jam. i mean he should probably bet fold i think Check call seems okay, but I should just fold here. Clearly, okay. This is this is a really bad play. This might be my worst play yet. No, probably not. I don't remember all the plays. It's probably not the worst, but I'm sure I was thinking, well, I can't check call this, so why don't I check raise, bluff, and try to win the pot? But it's just such a bad, bad hand. Uh, you, so you just need to fold. I just need to fold. And now I have a pretty good bluff spot. Sure, bet big. River plays good. He jams. That's unfortunate. And 86K lost or so in that pot. That didn't need to happen. Three bet. That's a little too big, but okay. Could bet or check turn. I check. He bets. Okay. He jams. I guess I called this. Why did I call this? I mean, I unblock spades. He is, if he has a hand like 10 9, he's going to play 10 9, 9 8. He's going to play this way a lot. I block 10 8. I don't know. It's not the worst call in the world. It's fine. But he just flopped the nuts. The, the thing is, these plays get worse as you start half potting flop because they need to start folding some weak 9 8 hands and stuff like that. But maybe he doesn't, anyways. All right. Raise, call three bet. Call flop bet. That's a big bet for this board, but that's what we were doing at the time. Decide to bet turn. I would check this, um, especially with the nut straight outs that can value bet. Like if I have river a 10, I can value bet. So yeah, I don't think I like betting this, uh, but obviously after I bet turn, I can't value bet when I hit the 10. But once I bet turn, I need to bet river. The river bet's good. He calls with 10 I flush. Well played from him. And not terrible for me, but I think the turn bet is, it's not the right combo for it. Um, I mean, not ridiculous, but don't bet this flop. And then just fold to the raise. Don't call this raise. This is a really weak hand. So you, you need to, you, Phil Galfond from 2014, you need to know the difference between absolute hand strength and relative hand strength and like playability. And this hand, yeah, I have two pair, but I don't beat any value. I'm drawing dead basically against value. I'm not going to be able to continue on many turns, although obviously it looks like I will because this pot got big. But yeah, this is just clear fold. That's a very good turn for me, easy call. And a good river. So calling it off, hoping he has 4-4. Four, four. All right, he had a missed draw. Makes sense from him all around. I should fold flop, but then the rest looks good. Nice to win a pot. This, this session review is actually tilting me, not because I'm losing, but because I'm playing so badly. Call three bet, call C bets, bets big. I kind of don't believe him that he keeps betting this turn. Uh, but just call and let him bluff river. And call, I, I, yeah, I just don't really believe him. Although he probably has it because I lost. Yeah, he just has it. I thought he would expect me to bet this turn a lot. Okay, three bet looks good. Lot bet looks fine. I mean, it looks good. Turn bet, yeah. I don't think I can fold it. Um, yeah, just get it in. Usually going to be behind, but I have two to one and could be ad. Like, as you've seen, we shove some combo stuff that we shouldn't. So it could be way ahead, potentially. Um, no, we just turn top set. Lucky to get half. Uh, I think this is not a three bet, but whatever. Call the four bet once I do three bet. Open jam. I mean, whatever. I, I would check, but betting is fine. Let me get it in. 
Probably flipping against his range. Those are good runouts for us. We're going to win one. Call three bet. Call C bet. Call turn. Not happily. Uh, I don't see why I'm jamming it in. Just play. I'm afraid to play the river. That's why. I should just call turn. He has the turn straight with a weaker flush draw, and he's going to get it all. Another bad play for me. Gets punished. Um, so far, so good. Um, I mean, I'm not folding. I think just rip this in, probably. I mean, in theory, I think it's call, but just raising probably against the way that I think he's playing is good. Because he's just got so many, like, just ace-ace queen from what I've seen. Just top set again. Lucky to get half, though. Three bet call, four bet. All looks good so far. Yeah, here I don't mind the open jam. Check raise is okay too, but here he's going to have some ace king queen 10 that I'd like to just fold that he could check back with. That run out looks good. This run out looks good. Take it down against ace king jack eight. So, I mean, if he has that with a nine, well, does he fold a nine? If he has it with a four instead of an eight, you know, he's folding the best hand by. Maybe not the best, best hand. Uh, this should be a fold for me on the flop against this sizing. If he's third potting, just call, but nothing great can happen. I mean, it can, but not a lot of great things can happen with this with this uh, combo. That's one of them. I think it's just a call. We're a little too deep to rip 200 big blinds in here. So this is too much. I think I just need to call. He is betting too much, like we've talked about, but it's too much to put in. Actually get it in, you know, a little bit ahead and hold. So it's 240k pot. How did I, I mean, I guess I've lost most pots, but I didn't think I was going to win one of the biggest. Whoa. <laughs> he check calls in Donk's turn. I didn't know that he was doing that. I don't know what this is. I mean, my hand's just a call. What is he doing? I want to see. I'm going to get to see his hand, I think. I wonder why I went small. I'm repping a straight. Maybe I'm trying to rep like five, six and hope that he does something crazy. What does he have? He must have five, six. Five, six, nine. So we turned the extra outs and he was just like, I'm going to lead and make Phil fold his jack, jack, 10, three hands. It's not unreasonable, but it's pretty tough to balance. Um, okay. Call three bet, call C bet, looks good. Basing pot. Um, I honestly don't know what this is. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> it's not that, I'm not supposed to jam. Uh, it's call or fold. And uh, I'm gonna win one of them. Jack eight, okay. call but not thrilled this is really dicey already uh i guess call i have to stop jamming these it's so bad i'm gonna win one of them kings with diamonds yeah that's really really bad i'm i can't believe how much worse i was here than in past years bet call check raise looks good obviously my sizing is too big but good bet nonetheless easy call on the turn did he size down Pots. Do I shove the rest in or just call? I think just call, but it's close. That looks like a straight flush for a big pot. And actually, that's it. We did it. We got through all of the big pots. I mean, yeah. Wow. I, I hope you enjoyed that. I did not enjoy that at all, actually, <laughs> seeing myself play so badly. When I, I recently reviewed another session against Patrick Antonius from 2010 and i actually liked my play here i'm shocked that i played this badly i must have like i mentioned that i had a lapse in skill <laughs> at this point in my career but i didn't think it was this bad i didn't think i'd regressed i thought i just stopped growing and my opponents surpassed me but uh i actually regressed and it, you know it's some combination of going to the session obviously tired and probably getting tilted. Um, but also I think there was a lot of fear at play for me, just thinking back to 
how I just was so sick of folding turns to his turn C bets because he three bet so often and he C bet flops so often, he C bet turns so often, it felt like, and I mean, technically he did, that those pots just kept happening and I kept folding turns. And so I just wanted to shove flops and shove turns because I thought that would combat his really high frequency. As you saw here, I mean, these are just the pots that got big. So maybe he was bet folding a lot, but he had decent hands too. So yeah, not happy right now reviewing that play. Like it actually upsets me even today, not because I lost so much. By the way, I lost just under 900,000 this session. That's not the part that upsets me today. The part that upsets me, although it certainly upset me at the time, the part that upsets me today is how badly I played in 2014. If we were looking at a 2005 session, I'd be like, okay, yeah, sure. But I don't find it as funny when it was recent enough that I was supposed to be playing really well. Hello, and welcome to a scary session. I went into this session scared. And what I mean by that is the stakes at the time for me were particularly high. I mean, these are incredibly high stakes in general, but sometimes I played 501k with enough of a bankroll and you know, on an upswing that, that I was very comfortable. I don't remember the particular details, but I know at this time, I think I'd probably been losing for a while and my bankroll was getting a little bit tight. And so 501k is, is a very big game. And second of all, I'm playing this player, Cadillac 1944, is a recreational player, which is why I'm taking a shot this big, but also is incredibly aggressive. So over the time that I played with him, I think he three bet 50% of hands, which a normal three bet is about 18, 20%. These days at that time, this was in 2010, a normal three bet was probably closer to 10, 12%. So not only were the stakes really big, but he makes the gameplay even bigger. I went into this nervous. I'm sure it affected my play a little bit. Let's see how I do. So what I have for you here is every hand that either got over 18K or saw the turn. So that'll you know include a fair number of hands from a session, uh, especially because when he three bets, which he does quite often, the pot is immediately 18K. Um, so I wonder if I should be limping more against his strategy or if he would start three betting less. So he three bets and checks on ace-king three, which isn't really a thing, although if you have a 50% range, maybe it is. I go with a small bet and he folds. So I must have had a read, I don't recall this, I must have had a read that he was very often folding when he checked these boards, either very often folding in general or very often folding when he checked boards that were really good for his range that you would think he would see about a lot of good stuff on, or that you would think he would see about a lot of stuff on in general. Uh, so off to a good start. Here, we three bet queen 10, nine, six, which actually is a three bet. I didn't think that I knew that at the time, but apparently in 2010 I did. Small bet flop, that's pretty good. That's what I would do today. I'd go slightly smaller and uh, we take it down. Look at that. 2023 Phil approved. Okay. So against somebody three betting 50%, opening nine, six, five, three single suited is not 2023 Phil approved. I would still probably limp this hand against him. Um, so I expect to have a post-flop edge, but it's tough when, when stacks are this deep to, or, or sorry, it's tough when you when you make the pot big, you reduce the stack to pot ratio, uh, and then you get into a spot like this where he's potting flop. I think he potted a lot of flops too. I have a pair, I have a double gut shot, I have a club. I think I should just call here, which, which I do. Turn is a jack, he pots again, and I have to fold. And uh, it doesn't feel good. Here I open, this is okay, he three bets again and he pots flop. So this is tough. So he was potting so many flops that when he pots this board, it's not like he needs to have a really strong hand. Um, potting this board is not really a thing these days. I, I mean, I think I need to call because I think calling with queen high flush draw is better than calling with king jack because king jack, both hands don't beat his, his value bets, but this hand has more outs against his value bets. Like I could just see him doing this with you know, ace, king, deuce, three. Um, so I think I like the call. King turn, he checks. The problem is there are two flush draws out now. His flop value range, I mean, maybe he has a five, but he's not folding that on the turn. But if I check the turn, can I represent anything on the river? I don't know. I'm tempted to small bet here and make him fold his air. But I, I don't know. That's what I did, Okay. It's at least, you know, 20, uh, 2010 fill is somewhat in line with 2023 fill. And then he opened Jams River. I actually remember this hand. Um, I mean, I called and he had, I think, aces with the flush draw. 
Oh no, Jax. All right, I didn't fully remember it. He had Jax with a five and Jack high flush draw. So that worked out very nicely and we are off to a good start, a very lucky start um, as he did, you know, bet pretty big on that flop with a very good hand. Uh, so he min raises button, I just call. Check, check, flop. We have two flush draws. I don't know what I like here. Betting is fine. Take it down. Defend the big blind, seems okay. Check, check. Don't really love checking turn. I think I just need to start value betting. At the time I didn't have a small sizing, which this would be a nice small bet, but it could also be a two thirds pop bet. Clear check on the river. He checks down. King 876 looks pretty good. I might have expected him to bet that on the turn. We open aces. He finally does not three bet. Uh, but he does donk full pot on deuce, deuce, six, rainbow. So quite uncomfortable already. He's repping a deuce, but we're not going to fold aces with a backdoor flush draw. He checks on the five. I think we should check. He's going to have a somewhat polarized range. And if he doesn't have a deuce, he's drawing near dead against our hand. Checks river. I have no, I have no clue what he has. Uh, I'm tempted to bet half pot, even though I can't have air. Uh, just hope he finds a call. But he had threes. And, and, and interesting that he doesn't bluff with threes when he turns the straight blockers. Uh, here he limps. I get to check back one of the worst hands in the deck. I have no idea why I'm betting this turn. I don't like this. Um, I guess I'm bluffing. Yeah. Um, I don't mind. I don't know. Uh, let's just move on. <laughs> I don't know. This hand I would probably not open against somebody three betting as much as him. He also donks flops. So yeah, against somebody who's opening, uh, who's three betting a lot and donking flops, raising weak hands on the button does not perform very well. I think this is just a fold against full pot. I went with raise because I just didn't believe him and I get it smashed into my face. He just wants to smash in 250 big blinds. <laughs> uh, okay. Nice flop for me here. Sure. Raise call three bet, okay. He checks flop. Earlier we saw that he checks kind of weak on these boards. I went for a big bet this time and it works once again. Call three bet. I mean, again, I should limp this hand, but uh, it is a call of the three bet once he three bets and easy fold on this flop. He's potting flop. I think this is a call. Check and hope he bets 4K. I don't know. Um, I just don't know. Yeah, fold seems fine. That's like entirely read based and I don't remember any reads on him that would sway me one way or the other. Here we open and call a three bet. Um, it's actually kind of interesting. At 100 big blinds, it might be correct to just start ripping stuff like this in pre because he's three betting 50% of hands. Um, but at this stack up, no. So he pots, easy call. Pot's turn. Um, if we had like 130K in stacks, I would rip this in. At 190K, um, I think it's just a call. I don't know. I went for the rip. He calls. That's not good. He had set of nines plus a flush draw. I mean, so the question is, is he doing this with ace nine? Um, and pro which is probably, is he doing it with King nine? Like how, how crazy is he? And then is he calling those? So, cause on this board, there are not that many draws. There are no open enders to be had. So I like just calling turn. And I mean, I'm getting stacked on an, like an offsuit seven river, but on the seven of diamonds, I don't need to. Uh, so there goes, what was that? We start with, there goes a, a 430k pot his way. And my scary session is getting a little more scary. All right, so this is what you want to see. You want to see the, the pot size donk when you have something. I think with a hand like ace three, I would raise here and hope he just rips in, you know, a week three. But with queen three, I want to let him try to catch up. I want to raise anyways. Um, wow, he just smashes it. All right, let's see what, what you have. Ace three, ace on the turn. It's not looking good. <laughs> is not looking good. I, I guess I maybe thought he was reasonably value heavy here and would just smash in any three, which, I mean, his play is, 
well, it's hard to say his play's fine because you don't have a you don't donk pot on this flop. But having donked pot and getting raised, his play's kind of fine to rip in ace three with no diamonds. Check call. Check whatever on the turn. I fold. Okay. Raise call three bet. You could maybe rip this in two. See, like this is where it gets really awkward is he pots flop and you have an overpair and he's potting so many hands that it's hard to fold. I think I like call and then just, you know, turns get really awkward. I just ripped it in instead, which is not the end of the world, but it's just my equity is not very good against anything that, that wants to get it in uh, with me. And uh, he just has top set. So this is, uh, this is going poorly very fast. Uh, raise call three bet. We flop very well. He pots. Do I want to call or jam? I think just jam because I, I want to take the fold equity. But he is going with it. I don't think I'm going to win with jack high. Just has top set again. So, I mean, we're seeing a lot of, I don't know, we're seeing him see bet a lot, but we're also seeing him have sets and stuff a lot. Um, so it's kind of hard to say uh, how aggressive he's being. And we saw him check flop and then check fold to a small or medium sized bet on boards that were pretty good for his range. So it might be the case that his c betting range is stronger than I think. All in all, I lost $400,000 that I could not really afford to lose at the time. Um, but I, I made sure to quit then and not make it worse. Um, and I kind of hobbled back to some lower stakes to rebuild as, I, as I'd done before. It was a sad day though at the Galfond apartment. And it does seem like often when you go into these sessions taking a shot and you're scared and uncomfortable. It does often go poorly. And part of that is because of selective memory and negativity bias. But another part of it is that when you're scared, you do play a little bit more defensively, you play worse. And I saw a couple instances of that uh, over this short session. Uh, however, I think I still should have had an edge overall. Hey, everybody, Phil here. I am going to do my first hand breakdown today and get to do some PLO strategy this time. I know a lot of you watching play No Limit Hold'em. I We'll certainly be talking about that in the future, but all the, all the poker I play these days is PLL. And um, that's what we're gonna talk about. Every hand is just so huge. One. There's a call from Venny. Lots of money in the middle right now. The biggest pot we've seen for some time. This first hand that I chose is a, a very special hand. Uh, it's the final hand of the first match, the Galfon Challenge. For those who are not familiar with the Galfon Challenge, it's kind of too long of a story for me to tell you uh, in an intro to a video. The gist is I was playing this match. It was 25,000 hands against a very tough opponent at 100, 200 PLO. That's 20,000 euro buy-in. We had a side bet, um, my 200,000 to his 100,000 on who would come out ahead at the end of 25,000 hands. And this started off terribly for me. I actually lost 900,000 straight in about, I want to say 8,000 hands and actually made the full comeback to be in contention on the very final day of the challenge, which was extremely improbable, not just making that comeback and, and being uh, in it on the final day, but actually the, the final day, like the final 500 hands of the match even mattering. Usually in these cases, a winner will already have been decided and it's kind of um, a formality to play it out. Not only did we get down to the final 500, 500 hands or so, we actually got down to the final 100 hands. Through most of this day, he was in the lead. And there's actually a lot of really interesting strategy that was entirely new to me because it's a new format where it's it's kind of a cash game and kind of a tournament. Um, there were many hands where I couldn't make the right play for a cash game because if I were, say, to lose 5,000 in this individual pot, I would be the loser of the challenge. And so I had to play defensively or sometimes I had to play offensively. And actually more often I had to play offensively. So in this last hand, we are under a hundred hands to play. We switched from two tables to one table so that we could each exactly count the hands and the results um, because those factors were so important in our decision-making. If one player were to get up the, um, a certain amount at this point, and it, it kind of depends on the number of hands that have been played, they can just sit out and, um, well, fold the rest of the hands and win, which is the, at this point, the right decision because the, you know, 300,000 euro swing on the side bet, um, far outweighs, you know, folding away a thousand in, in big blinds or whatever the case may be. 
well, I guess that's the context. So uh, you already know this is the final hand, so it's going to be a bigger one. We've mostly been trading small pots back and forth. And as of late, I've been the aggressor. Um, he spent most of the day in the lead, as I mentioned. I was trying to force him to make decisions early in the hand to either fold or risk playing a really big pot because what I didn't want to do was lose like 4,000 euro. What I did want to do was give myself the opportunity to win 15,000 euro in a pot. We were so close to the fold out on either side that even though he was ahead a little bit with a big win, I could get to the point where I could fold out and win, but he could do it with a small win. And so basically my approach was Look, if we're going to play a pot where I risk losing, we're going to play a big pot so that he's risking losing as well. And so I upped my aggression. I upped my bet sizes on early streets for these purposes. So let's get into the hand and uh, I'll talk you through what I was thinking as, uh, as I was playing. So I am dealt queen, 10, 10, 8, single suited on the button. Good hand. I'm opening a lot of hands here. He's not three betting very much. He's playing passively, all the, all the reasons I mentioned. Uh, he's doing a lot of open limping on the button. So I, I hit a huge flop. I have the pair of tens, which is not that valuable at this point uh, in comparison to the rest of my hand, but I have a flush draw and a wrap, which is just a massive draw against the set. I'm actually a small favorite here. This is, I'm betting full pot with a lot of hands. Like I said, if we're gonna if I'm gonna lose, you know, a couple thousand chips or risk losing a few thousand chips, uh, I want to be able to win a whole bunch. And so I'm forcing him to tough decisions on the flop. So basically what I do on this flop is I'm going to take a bunch of good hands and pot with them and then a bunch of kind of weaker, mediocre hands. And then of course, some weak hands that have strong equity or, or a high chance to improve. So like a weak, a weak nut flush draw here, like uh, ace king three deuce with nut diamonds. That's a hand that normally would check back here because of the match dynamic and because of how badly I want to win a big pot. Um, and he therefore cannot check raise aggressively, uh, and cannot kind of punish me, uh, in any, in any real way. Like the way he punishes me is by calling and then I miss and he, he wins the pot, but, uh, any hand that can turn the nuts, I'm going to, or, or near nuts, I'm going to play really aggressively because I just want to gamble. Like I really want to flip for stacks right here, given the, the point in the match that we're at. So I pot this hand, of course, this is, I mean, value, I have a massive hand. And we're going to see him call. Turn is the four of diamonds. Now, usually in this spot, a 10 high flush is the kind of hand you would check back on this board. So what you're hoping to accomplish is, um, you know, it's not a hand that can bet two streets for value. And so generally when you're building your value betting ranges on the turn, uh, especially in PLO, this is a little bit less true in Hold'em, but it's still a good concept to have in mind. You want to build value ranges that can bet multiple streets. So what I mean by that is generally speaking, as a rule of thumb, the hands that I want to value bet on this turn are hands that I can continue value betting on river. So full houses, nut flush with like a nine or something. So I block some full houses. That's, that's kind of as thinly as I want to go for value. And then hands like a 10 high flush, I would check back and now I can induce bluffs on the river or I can bet check bet and get my value uh, across two streets that way. When you go bet bet check, the problem with that, um, especially on a board like this, that's more locked down, there's not a lot of equity to deny when you have flush. You know, his, his, his hands that are folding are drawing dead to a flush almost. So um, the problem with bet bet checking is that I prevent him from being able to bluff on the river. I just miss out on my opportunity to win from his misdraws and Let's say even like queen 10, nine, that's a pretty good hand on the flop. But then the river 10 means that everything got there. And now he has to turn that into a bluff because otherwise he's never bluffing. Um, so generally with a 10 eye flush, you want to check back in a spot like this. However, this hand has some very unique properties uh, for 10 high flushes. Uh, it has four outs to effectively the nuts, um, two outs to literal nuts with the straight flush draw, queen of diamonds, seven of diamonds. And then two outs to an overfull, um, 10 of hearts, 10 of spades. And so what I decided to do here is go ahead and bet half pot, get my one street of value with my 10 high flush, check back river. But if I improve 
to one of my four outs, which can happen about 10% of the time. Now I have a hand that can value bet three streets. And so sometimes you do want to want to make a turn value bet with a hand that's probably not going to value bet the river, but is value betting now, but has enough cards that it can value bet that, that it, it's worth building a pot. The other nice thing about this, given the match dynamic, is that he really doesn't want to raise. Um, it actually doesn't benefit him. I think if I were to half pot this turn and then check river and lose, I don't quite lose the match, but I get close. Um, but he still, he doesn't, by raising and opening himself up to getting full stacks in, um, th there are not a lot of hands that want to do that. And he actually rather in induce with the hands that are good enough to do that. He'd rather check call and um, let me bluff the river or let me value cut myself. So a unique spot where I think value betting a 10 high flush is the right decision. Now, obviously I hit the dream river um, or one of the four dream rivers uh, here with the 10 of spades. Uh, so I do get to make that value bet that 10% of the time I was gonna get to make. So it's not as if, you know, I necessarily planned for this to happen, but I did plan for this to happen as part of all of the factors that I'm considering. Um, I planned for this to happen 10% of the time, and that was enough to shift my turn decision um, to provide myself the opportunity to play a big pot here. So I'll go ahead with a little bit of a spoiler, which is that um, my opponent has nine four for a turned full house, a weak full house. So he loses all full houses. He beats a little bit of value, just the nut flush. Um, but he does block jack four, nine four, nine nine, all of which are, you know, that, that makes up a big portion of my value range right there. Uh, so he does make the call. I am, uh, I remember at this point, I'm very quickly trying to figure out exactly how much I'm up and exactly how many hands are left. And I couldn't figure out if, uh, if I needed to fold this hand or not. So obviously I have a really good hand in the big blind that I would normally be excited to play, but I think I can fold to victory and I'm, I'm tanking down trying to figure it out. I eventually do figure it out and uh, sit out to confirm, but fold this hand. And uh, the rest is history, or actually that is the rest. Oh my God. River's the full house. We're going to have to confirm these numbers, but that might have done it. That might have been the final hand. Phil is folded and sitting out. He's done Whoa! it. It is over. Phil is comes back, rises from the ashes, was dead. People said he was washed out. They said he was done. They said he should retire. He came back from being down 900,000 euros and wins it at the zero hour here on Easter Sunday. Hey, everybody. Phil here. Let's look at some PLO hands. Today, I'm going to review a couple of hands from my Galphon challenges. So starting with this first one, at this point we're we're uh, at session 39 against Chance Corneth. And this, this match was uh, quite a swingy one. So I started off the match up, uh, we're playing 100, 200. So I was up 300,000, almost 280,000 in the early like first couple weeks. Um, he goes on a huge tear. I'm down 350,000. So I go on a 500, well, no, uh, six hundred thirty thousand dollar downswing, and then I actually climb back out. And by the time we're here, um, and it actually the graph is kind of like up, down, up. Uh, it's pretty. It's it's not too uh, wobbly. <laughs> At this point, I'm up uh, like hundred hundred to one hundred fifty thousand going into this session. I'm having a good session. I'm up a couple of buy-ins, um, and I get dealt king king nine five single suited in the big blind. Uh, I three bet and get called. Um, and hit a beautiful flop of uh, king four three rainbow. Uh, no backdoor flush draw for me, but that's okay. I have top set. So generally in these spots, um, oftentimes I'll I'll make kind of st strong strategy adjustments to my opponents, but this is not an example of that. Um, I essentially always check top set on a board like this. I think solver would check a decent amount of top sets, not all of them, um, but I like to simplify my strategy and so on a board like this it's pretty dry that i'm i've got a lot of hands that you know i'd like to check call like like a, lot, a ton of one pair hands that i'd like to check call these turns get pretty dicey for me and uncomfortable um when they're a turn low card or pairs the board for example um so i like putting king king in my check call range just 100 percent of the time and um it's important to you know with like king four with four four with three three you want to try to Put some more money in so you might want to bet three bet you might want to check raise sometimes um i would never check call king four i would never check call 
uh, four four unless I had a king as well. Um, but with king king specifically, I block the hands that want to get it. Like I block king four, I block king three, block king x, which is going to call and turn two pair and put in a lot of money. So king king just goes into my check call range. Chance was very tricky, and um, he used a lot of sizings in these spots. Um, so in this case, he actually goes two thirds. He was mixing up his sizings throughout the match. Um, but my plan is to check call against any sizing here with King King. So I check call, uh, turn is the queen of hearts. Uh, I check. I, so like, can you have a leading range here with SPR two when the queen is pretty good for your range out of position? Yeah, but I don't think you need to. I think you can get away with just checking everything. He's still very incentivized to bet King four and like his, his flop value range is still incentivized to bet. Yes. We kind of give a free card to some hands, but keep in mind that we have like we have uh four five ace four five six we have um queen queen six seven and or i guess in this jack jack six seven that connects on those those low straight cards so you know we get a free card often too so i think checking range works pretty well here um i do decide to check my hand and he checks back river six so generally speaking this is a, a very bad card for my range um he's gonna have like a lot more five deuce than me, um, more five, seven, not, not massively. So, but when, when he bets flop and checks turn, he's kind of saying, especially when he bets big on the flop. So when he bets big on the flop, he's saying, I have a hand that wants to get all in now, or I have a bluff and the hands that want to get all in now are like King four, three, three, and, uh, like King five, six. And for the most part, when he checks turn, he's saying, okay, well, I didn't have that part of my range. I didn't have 3-3. Three, three. I didn't have king-4. Um, maybe I had king-5-6, but I didn't have I didn't have king-4. I didn't have a set. Um, so I had either a strong draw or a weak draw. That's kind of what he's telling me. Maybe he hit the queen. Maybe he was bluffing with like um, queen-8-7-3 uh, or something, and now he's got weak two pairs. So he can have hands that can call, but for the most part, I think he's got um, one pair or zero pair on the turn. And so against that range, I don't think I want to bet this river. I have a ton of one pair hands that I want to check and be able to get to showdown. He can value bet pretty thinly here in position, um, especially on a, a river like this, where like if I check and he has queen six, um, you know, I think he can pot for value. And if he doesn't want to pot, if he has like four six, he can half pot and he's not going to face many check raises because I have to be scared of the straights, et cetera. So, um, I wouldn't say that I check my full range on this river, but I'm I'm doing quite a bit of checking on this river. I think my hand, King King, uh, with a five. So like I'm blocking his random like King. I'm blocking King six five, which is actually in a value bet anyways. And blocking King three if he decided to play it this way and get nitty on the turn or King four um, for that matter. And um, I'm blocking King X. Like let's say he had Ace King five uh, nine. Like that's a hand that might hero call river that might bet flop but uh, I'm blocking that very hard. Uh, actually, all of my cards block that. So I like checking here, which is what I do. And he goes ahead and pots. So at this point, I mean, he's repping straights. Um, sometimes I'll have 6-6, six, six, sometimes I'll have king 5-6. Like I said, maybe he can value better thinly as queen 6 or like a, a different queen's up potentially, but probably not. This is probably king's up plus. Um, I don't think that I should be check raising here. I think while he can value bet, some thinner hands most of the time he's value betting or i don't know half the time he's value betting something something in that range uh, or that neighborhood my hand's going to be no good because of the straights and so by the time i check raise he can just fold most of the hands worse than mine and call with every hand better than mine so i like just calling um despite it being a very strong holding now on like a river seven Gets a little bit closer because now only one straight gets there. Um, and therefore he's going to, well, he's going to have a straight less frequently and he's going to potentially value, you know, value bet more two pair hands. So on river seven, maybe I go for the check raise here with the second nuts rather than the third nuts here. Um, in this actual hand, he had a uh, ace four, five, nine with backdoor clubs. This is a, I mean, makes a ton of sense um, on the turn and the river. His flop play is kind of, um, I mean, it's, a, it's aggressive and like betting this like caliber of hand is, is good, but I would tend to check back with a nut flush draw, um, check back with like the second nut gut shot 
Um, and like, this is a good hand on, you know, an ace turn, a four turn, which are turns I'm going to be pretty aggressive on out of position. So I think I would have checked his hand on the flop, um, but certainly fine to bet hands like these. Um, and then I think he is right to bet the river. You do have to be a little bit careful here because you fold a decent amount of five deuce pre-flop. You don't bet all of your five, seven on the flop or all of your five deuce on the flop. Um, and then you get a, get to the river with a lot of like six, five, four, five, three, five. Um, even just like total air that you bet the flop with, um, or like ace, deuce, seven, eight. Um, so you have a lot of bluffing candidates. You have to be careful not to overdo it. Um, but because you can go kind of thinly for value with two parent stuff, um, you get to use quite a few of them. All right. Let's look at another hand. All right. So this is a pretty interesting one. Uh, also from day 39 against chance. Um, at this point, I am up 100K this session. So session's going well for me. Um, and it looks like it's going to keep going well because I flop uh, full house in a single raise pot. So he raises button. I call the big blind with ace-9-8-3 uh, with an eight-high suit. Flop is ace-9-9. Nine, nine. It goes check, check. Um, and I have my first couple decisions on the 10 of spades turn. So I decide to check my hand, um, locking the ace. It's kind of tough to get called down twice. And I do think chances, like he likes, um, well, he, he he traps the flop a decent amount with like 9x, or he, he checks the right amount of 9x. Um, he is checking the flop with a lot of 10 10, so I don't necessarily want to blow the pot against that, although, I mean, I'm looking to play a big pot. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, essentially in this spot with my hand, you just want to mix it up because you need this in kind of all of your ranges. I like, um, I like checking when I unblock like every draw because he's going to you know, do a fair bit of betting with, with, with draws, of course, and then continue potentially bluffing river. I have a lot of like weak ace X that want to call here. I have a lot of King Jack 10 that want to check call, um, and similar type hands. So I think this is, um, fine to check all. It's also fine to bet. You know, when I half pot, which is my sizing here on the turn, he's going to call with a lot of draws and then potentially have to bluff river. Um, but somehow I, I kind of feel like the way this plays out better as a check call, because what happens when I bet, so let's say I bet turn and river is the offsuit four, four. Uh, and then I go for a check. Like if I bet he's got a lot of missed draws that he folds, um, or like King 10 Jack that he folds. If I check the problem is here, I look like I mean, I look like a check raise, a river check raise, or air. And so if he has any kind of showdown value, like any pair, he's just going to show it down. He's just going to check. So I don't think you actually induce a lot of bets. Like, yes, he'll bluff sometimes, and yes, he'll value bet 9x, and yes, he'll value bet some ace-king. But um, but for the most part, you get a lot of, you don't induce a ton of bluffs because a lot of bluffs just end up having showdown value. So I think this plays pretty well as check call, which is what I do. I, I don't like check raising this turn because First of all, like I'm blocking the hands that I want to call me, ace X and 9X. And I actually do run into 1010 sometimes. Again, I'm looking to get a lot of money into this pot. I am going to be check raising rivers. But because of the makeup of his range, if I start check raising now, I just get him to fold a lot of stuff. Um, whereas he can actually make some stuff on the river and then call a check raise. So I do check call rivers a queen. So for example, he could make uh, on this river, he could make jack eight, he could make king jack. Um, he goes ahead and pots, and I go for the check raise. I didn't pot it. I'm not sure. I mean, I think I just pot my hand. I'm not sure why I didn't. Um, and he actually shoves, putting me in a very tough spot. So I mean, I know I have I have ace nine, which is a huge hand. But when he bet three bets, so when I check raise this river, I'm saying that I have a full house, and I don't think that I'm saying um, don't think I'm saying I have a straight like against pot I think King Jack just calls so I'm saying I have a full house so when he jams he's saying I can beat a full house uh, which means he's gonna have quads or a full house now it's an interesting kind of hand reading exercise because this is actually a really interesting hand. I'm glad we picked this one. Um, props, Thomas. Um, so there, there's so much nuance. So on this river, I lose to 
Um, 10, 10, I lose to queen, queen, and I lose to ace, ace. Ace, ace is going to play this way, but I block ace, ace with the ace. So, like, and ace, ace is not always going to play this way. I think he usually bets flop with ace, ace. Sometimes he checks it, and then he plays it this way the rest of the time. Um, but usually he's bet flop. 10, 10 is going to play this way um, up until river very frequently. And then, um, but but we'll get back to what it does on the river next. And then queen, queen is always going to three bet the river um, if he's gotten here this way. But what queen, queen hands are going to bet the turn? Basically, queen, queen, nine, ace, queen, queen, both of which I block. But he's not just going to bet the turn with queen, queen, jack, or you know, queen, queen, five, four with spades. Those hands are just going to check. So he actually doesn't get to the river with a lot of king, uh, with a lot of queen, queen. And the queen, queen he does get to the river with, I block with my ace and my nine. He doesn't get to the river with a ton of um, ace, ace, because I think, well, first of all, I block it. Second of all, I think he bets the flop pretty often. Um, but he gets there with a little bit of it. And then, so then there's 10, 10. And so the really interesting thing about 10, 10 is that when I check call turn and check raise river, I actually look a lot like queen, queen. And so there's a chance that if he's sitting there with 10, 10, like a pretty good chance that if he's sitting there with 10, 10, he doesn't feel good about repotting it because, you know, you expect me to have some slow plays on the turn like this, but for the most part, if I have like 10, nine, I'm usually betting the turn. If I have queen nine, I'm usually betting the turn um, because those aren't like great traps. They're just better bet bets. And so actually a lot of my boats are either ace nine, uh, like I have here or queen, queen. And I actually think it looks a lot like I have queen, queen. Um, so I'm not sure that he's going to bet three bet 10, 10 in this spot. Um, very often. Yeah. Some, I, I guess I can have queen nine, like four, four, like really weak nine X, but for the most part, I'm betting nine X on the turn. So when I look like queen, queen, I think he actually might not three bet 10, 10. Like I said, I don't think he has queen, queen very often due to the turn play. And, you know, ace, ace, there are very few of those. So I ended up calling here. I mean, pause before I call. I also have to think of bluffs. So what is he bluffing with? Um, and then is he sick enough to go for the bet three bet bluff? And actually, that's that's a tougher question because he's not going to start bluffing river with queen x. Like he's just going to show down queen x um, if he's bet bet. Uh, turn and then rivers the queen. So like, if he has queen jack, whatever, whatever, he's checking. If he is somehow has queen ten, which I don't think he's gonna have very often, he's checking. Um, nine x makes a little bit of sense, and then it's gonna have to be like king queen jack, queen jack eight. Um, is he? I mean, maybe like jack nine eights, but I don't think so. So actually, this is one of those spots where you just rarely expect to see the three bet because there are not many value hands, but there are also not many bluffs. There's also the added element of, you know, he's down um, 100,000 today, which some people end up over bluffing in spots like that. And some people end up way under bluffing and they just like don't want to get into trouble. And I don't actually have a good feel for which of those chance was. I think he, when he was down, he, he liked to build big pots early, but I think he still played, you know, very reasonably on the rivers. So this is a this is a really tough spot. Um, and the the funny thing about spots like this um, is that sometimes, like based on your opponent and based on their mood and the way they think about the game, you could be up against like ninety percent bluffs, and other times you could be up against you know ninety eight percent value. Like they might just always have it. So like to this day, I mean, I know I know what happened in the hand. I I don't know if I like my play or not. I, I used my entire time bank and called. He actually did have king, queen, jack with spades. It doesn't really tell me too much other than he's capable of this. Um, props to chance on a really, really good play because he, he recognized that like, he's not going to have queen x to bluff with without a straight. He's not going to have queen 10. He's not going to have 10x. Like, Yeah, he's not going to have 10x to bluff with. So... What's he going to bet three bet with? If he's ever going to have bet three bets for value, it's got to be hands like this uh, for bluffs. So this tells me that you know my call is at least fine. Don't know if it's good or not because this is one of a few hands that can do this. Um, I think actually, I mean, against your average like 
mid-stakes player, I think this is just a fold because I don't think they're capable of plays like this. Um, but clearly Chance was, and uh, I was fortunate to win this pot. Still, I'm, I'm not sure if I like the call or not, um, but it happened to work out, um, and I did go on to win that challenge, uh, kind of like the straight lineup continued. Um, hopefully you found that interesting. If you'd enjoy watching me react to some very old hands that I played at very high stakes, you're in the right place. Today I'm going to review a session I played against Patrick Antonius at 501k heads up PLO from 2010. I filtered for every pot that is over 15 big blinds, so we're not going to look at the raise folds. I have not seen these hands since then. I don't know what to expect. I don't know if I believe I was playing well or poorly, and uh, similarly, I don't know about him. I do know at the time in 2010, we were two of the top heads up PLO players, so at the time, this was good play. Let's get into the action. I three bet with ace, queen, queen, three, very standard. We we bought in at 50 big blinds. I was never great at 50 big blind play. I have to say, I still am not. Um, but this hand certainly a three bet at, at 50 big blinds. He calls and we get a dicey-ish flop. We have a little over two times pot left. I think I just have to go with this and probably via an open pot. That's what I do. He calls, he's saying he does not have my hand beat right now basically ever, uh, but he has some kind of draw. And ace on the turn, easy jam with less than half pot remaining. He's not going to hit that card as often. I mean, he's going to call a lot because he probably has a pair plus draw of some kind that's pretty good, but easy jam. Uh, 10 river on the first, offsuit seven on the next. So not awful. And he actually has eight deuce. So I was wrong. He had me beat on the flop. I think this play is actually great by him. A lot of people I thought at that time would jam flop with his hand. But the reason you just call is because on a turn 10, you can actually fold your hand potentially on a turn like nine of clubs, maybe not with the king jack. Anyways, um, well played by, by both of us, I think. Open the button. Okay, now we're at 100 big blinds. That was just the first hand at the table, I think. Open the button, pretty weak hand. I go with a large C-bet, so... I don't like this. I don't use large sizing here. I think it's way too, it's not worth it. I'll just put it that way. So I, I would bet something like 2K here, 1500 or 2K. And my hand's a pretty good betting hand. He calls. So his his range is supposed to be fairly tight here. Turn, I go ahead and bet big again. I don't mind the turn sizing. I don't mind the choice of hand either. His, his range is kind of strong, but yeah, I, I like the turn bet. And river's pretty interesting. Let's see what I do. I go for it. I mean, now I just use pot. I wouldn't use this four-fifths pot or whatever I'm doing. I block the 10. It's essentially impossible for me to have something that missed. So I think this is a smart bluff for me. Uh, but he doesn't. He calls with. Uh, wonderful. Uh, standard from him, although that might be a three-bet pre, I think. And other than sizing, it's re relatively good for me. Call a three bet and have an easy fold to that large sizing. He limps, I raise. This is, I'm not sure if solver approved or not, but reasonable raise. Go for a big bet here. Now I would bet small with my full range. Uh, looks like I was going big with my full range probably and uh, have to fold to this raise. Okay, we call a three bet. Looks good. He checks, king seven three. There was not as much checking back then, so. Uh, he checks again. I mean, this is just standard for me. It's kind of close as to whether I can half pot or, or not, but I think probably check. So kind of iffy from him to never bluff, but actually it, it makes sense. Um, it makes sense because once he doesn't, it, like flop, he can check call and then turn is not a good card for him to bet. He might want to check his full range and river's not a great card for him either. So I'm not seeing as much bad play as I expected. Um, sure, with this flop bet, I mean, this is pretty bad. <laughs> I don't want to block an ace and a three and a six when I'm betting this turn. I want him to have check called with a hand like ace, deuce, three, or ace, five, three, um, deuce, six, three, et cetera. So he's going to have a king a lot, he's going to have flush a lot. Uh, I think this is a bad bet. And interesting river. I mean, I still think I should give up, but it's not the worst hand to bluff river with once we get here. Let's have all of that. Um, yeah, turn bet for me. Go for the turn probe. This sizing's fine. 
I like the give up from me, although betting's not the worst when I have an ace and a queen. Uh, his line is very standard. He had that. Uh, pretty good three bet, I think. And sure, good flop line. Let's get it in. Let's see what happens. Um, all right, not the best run out. I mean, I think he probably has me beat. I guess he could have some king three, some three three maybe, although he potted flop. He's not going to pot three three. Um, king three, a lot of like king plus nut flush draw or eight plus nut flush draw. I mean, I think I'm beat on this river. Uh, oh, okay. Well, both boards bring the flush, the first board. Well, both boards on the turn. I'm not feeling good about my hand. Um, no, that's really bad from him. Um... He's just like, on the flop, he's making me fold every worse hand. Can I can I call a worse hand? Sure, I could have like ace, jack, 10, eight with hearts and call it off. Usually not hearts though, so he's like flipping. Um, and call every better hand. I'm not folding many king x hands that bet this flop or ace, ace hands. I mean, some maybe, but all right. We each have a bad play. His was more expensive, I think, but he won uh, the 200K pot, so who am I to say? Raise call three bet. Good flop for me. So in his shoes, I don't check anything here. It's not the worst. Um, looks like I'm going with a little under. I mean, close, a little over third pot, 35%. Seems fine. I mean, this is a good betting hand. I would always bet this hand. It's just a matter of choosing a size. So you check calls, check, check, turn. Looks good. Very easy river pot. I'm repping queen jack. I'm repping jack, jack. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't like the smaller than pot sizing. I don't see the point, but that's just what I was doing back then. Sure. Uh, no, I need to check raise this river. This is a bad bet, I think. Um, don't have any hearts in my hand. He, and like I block six, seven. Uh, not that that actually matters too much. Well, yeah, it, like that's a hand that's not betting, but it's calling a lot. So yeah, I don't like this bet. I think I should check raise. And I would have gotten to check raise against that and maybe gotten a call. Call three bet, call C bet, pretty standard. Uh, turn the second nuts and he's potting. Jeez. <laughs> this is actually, uh, this is a really tough spot. He's, he's repping ace king. He can have king king with diamonds, king king with clubs, ace ace with diamonds, ace ace with clubs. If I know myself, I'm probably not folding. I think if I continue, I think calling is best because I can save some money against ace king on some rivers. And also um, like then if he, I don't know, on a brick river, it looks like I have a combo of something. Although it's really hard to have like to call with less than two pair. So I need to be bluffing with anything on the river. I don't know. Um, I just jam. I mean, I think I should call, but it's not the worst. And I think folding is, I, I think all three options are good here. He has ace, queen, six, seven with clubs. So flop bet's good. Turn. I would just check turn. That's like, he's just getting it in dead a lot against like, if I have clubs that are stronger than his, king, nine of clubs, ace, nine, eight with clubs. I don't know. I think it's a little loose. It's not ridiculous. Though. Okay, I raise a limp. I bet. I'd like to see myself check and check raise this board just because this is not a good board for my range, but whatever. Um, could small better check turn. Big bet is bad. Don't do that, Phil. Um, yeah, I don't like the big bet. Check river is good. He checks, so I'm going to win. Six, nine, four, four. Okay. Yeah, all pretty standard, I guess. Yep, cool. Checks out. I think this hand's a three bet, although we are a little deeper. Oh, sorry. Wait, what am I doing? What am I doing? I do. I think that I raised a limp, and I'm maybe we're two tabling, and I'm distracted. We must be. So this is, I mean, I just shouldn't have a betting range on this board. And if I do, I mean, yeah, it's not the hand. This is like a good board for him. Turn, check, check. I mean, I don't know how to analyze this hand, but yeah, 
good check on the river once I make that terrible flop bet. I'm not watching this. Like he raised, yeah. Just want to make sure I'm not seeing things. Uh, yeah, check facts, pretty good. Call turn. It's not. It's not a very happy turn call. He's like I could even fold this honestly. But fine. Check check. If I had one pair somehow, I'd bluff, but not king five. We have ace ten. Uh, his turn bet's bad. He should check call. But I mean. He, I made a bad call, so joke's on me. Um, sure. Well, I mean, standard. Uh, I think against the way he's playing, I have to call again. I have a lot of nut outs, and he might he's just like merging a lot of stuff that I could be ahead of. So I don't like that fold. Three bet, I should check this flop. Well, it's not the worst, but yeah, I would like checking. I don't like betting check fold he's gonna bet that turn a lot check on flop is good check on turn is good call is good yeah i wonder what he has so turn bet is fine i guess the the flop check is not you know i mean i could be check jamming like ace king 10 x with a flush draw and he's just up against a flush draw like he's um you just don't like it's very rare that you want to check back a set when you do you want it to be like blocking top pair not all the bottom pairs that i'm not going to have much of anyways call three bet we're 190k deep to start the hand he goes big on this flop which is fine i have an easy call with my hand check i mean i think i should check on the double flush draw board he could be going for a check jam with something it's a nice river yeah i think i'd like to see myself half pot which is pretty close to to represent like ace nine because he can potentially check raise king king he just folds interesting raise call three bets have to fold when he's betting that big um, I don't, th that sizing is not really a thing anymore. Easy check with my range and I don't know, actually. Check call is not ridiculous. I think I need to bluff the river because how do I have a worse hand than this? I mean, ace king, it's hard to have a worse hand than this, but he probably has a straight. I don't know. I think I need to bluff river for some sizing. His play, let's see. Turn is good. Flop is loose, but it's fine. Whoops. Easy bet. Okay. So leading turn is not a thing. I mean, it, it possibly could be occasionally solver proof, but I, I'd be surprised and nobody does this. Um, I have the super nuts, so that's good that he's betting. I go with a small raise. I like this, I think, because if he does have what he's representing, which is five deuce, he can just rip it in and I can get my free roll on. Um, and if he has like, I don't know, some kind of straight draw plus flush draw or blockers plus flush or blockers plus flush draw, maybe you can call. So I like the raise. Dicey river, he's leading. Why did he? I mean, five, six, seven does make sense. I block it with the five. It's actually good that I have the five. Um, and there's a five on the board. Honestly, but I, so my read on Patrick at the time was that he was under bluffing generally. So this is not a thrilling spot. Um, and he's representing better than my hand, certainly. Is it possible he puts me on aces and he somehow and he has like, well, five deuce or, I don't know, 10 
I, I, some kind of combo that is the the wheel. It's maybe possible. Um, let's just see what I did. I called. Hmm. Nice. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, turn bet is not a thing, but once he bets, he does he need to call that? He's getting. No, I don't think he should call. He. If all of his outs are good, he has 11 outs, basically. Um, well, 12, 13 if you include sets. It just doesn't, uh, I think it's probably a fold. Okay. Flop top set, easy bet. He, Yeah, all this turn leading is not much of a thing. So he leads turn. The question is, do I raise or not? He's repping one, only one straight gets there. I could deny a lot of equity. He does have five, seven. I guess I'm in pretty rough shape if he does have five, seven, but why is he leading five, seven when there's a double flush dry out? That's such a nice, clean check raise hand to kind of end the hand. Um, I don't know. I don't think he has the straight. I guess maybe let's call and call river on a lot of rivers. That's fine too. Yeah, so now I think I need to bet. I mean, he's was bluffing, um, so he's folding, but I think bet something. Okay, what does he have? <laughs> Could he have like ace, six, seven with some diamonds? Did he river a king with king, king nine, eight, seven? Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I mean, it's hard for me to evaluate the leads because I just don't think there should be any. His hand choice, I think, is a pretty bad one, though. So yeah, as kind of predicted, we're making a lot of mistakes. Um, by the way, I'm not being critical of Patrick Hughes. Like at, at this time, we were <laughs> both very, very good. Yet for 2023, if, if we took our 2010 selves and put us here, we would not be doing so hot. So check call. Standard. I kind of like check calling river, but betting's okay. Okay. Yeah, if he had a diamond, he might bluff that. Limped pot. Um... I definitely need to raise my hand. I don't know why I'm not raising ace jack nine five single suited. That's bad. Um, I mean, I'm not folding. I'm just wondering if I can raise. Probably not. Just check call. The limping range is still betting. Um, I don't know. Call seems fine. No, we're not folding, but he's not betting. Yeah. It's just like this board where his limping range is not going to do well on this board. I mean, his, his line is fine, though. He's got a pretty good combo for it. But you need to restrict your bluffs a lot. Uh, yeah, check flop is good. Call. Interesting. Not bad. This is not, this is interesting. It's not bad. Yeah. Cool. Nice hand me. Okay, bet something. Good. Check. No, wait, well, I mean, I can't fold if I check. The question is, am I really denying much equity though? I mean, I am, flush draws. Is potting a thing? Potting seems excessive. I think like small better check. <laughs> uh, so I'm just check potting. That is bold. Um, here's the thing. I don't need to, you don't need to use pot here as your check raise size um, when it's six, four deuce rainbow. He is like, we've seen him already in this session, bet a lot of pretty weak hands on these boards. And I think he's reasonably likely to. So I don't hate this, but the problem is I'm risking 45 to win 27. So it has to work, you know, two thirds of the time. I mean, I think it might, but I, I could just go, 32 and accomplish something similar. 
you know, maybe this, this gets the, fr like maybe if I go 30 and he has four or five king queen with the backdoor flush draw, he peels or something. Okay. Not bad. 2010 Phil. Had a little play in you. Uh, let's bet turn. Good. Uh, was small betting a thing back then? I don't know. Let's be a reasonable small bet. That can't big bet. I'd probably call now today, but I folded. Okay, bet, call, check, raise. Uh, yeah. Call, check, and win, I guess. I don't need to, but like, uh, yeah, I can't bet. I can't value bet. Okay, what do I think? I mean, he should just check call. And if he check raises, I think I think I like checking the turn, but his line's not ridiculous by any means. Okay. Yeah, fold. <laughs> uh, this is fold preflop, but. So one, yeah, one thing back then, I, I definitely overvalued rundowns. Like this is the worst rundown you can possibly have. And I, I way overvalued. And I remember when I started playing PLO, it must've been 2007 or something, 2006, 2007. Um, I was just like cold calling uh, like three bets with three, four, five, six single suited. Cause I was like, well, it's doing pretty decently against aces. It's like a flip. Um, so yeah, common mistake, but a lot of other players did the same. He's checking on ace nine deuce. I have a pretty good betting hand. Cool. Okay. Let's check small raising, a bluff or a monster, most likely. I mean, I call my hand every day. <sighs> Got to fold. Okay, he's potting for some reason. He's He was betting 5K mostly, but now he's potting. Uh, easy check call. And why did he size down? Why did you size down? Was he bluffing and then he like made ace jack or ace nine or something or ace? What did I do? Okay, yeah. I wanna try to guess. So um, whenever somebody sizes down, you have to ask yourself, okay, well, what are the value hands they would size down with? And then you have to ask yourself, if they're bluffing, would they think to size down? Because when he bets turn, let's go back to the turn, he's essentially potting turn. He's repping a set or better. And on this river, a set or straight can bet full pot very easily. So when he sizes down, he's saying, well, I had, like he had to have had a bluff on the turn it, this again, this is 2010. I don't know if, uh, if this applies today uh, or rather, I don't know if my logic today applies back then because maybe he was just, you know, playing like this with five, five or, or a straight just to be tricky or something. Maybe the thought process is the ace is a scare card. So I want to size down. So Phil calls, but essentially today, what this would mean if you size down is that you were bluffing on the turn. So the question is, was he bluffing on the turn with like, queen 10 with hearts and now he doesn't want to pot because he doesn't have a good blocker or was he bluffing with you know something that made aces up and i don't know the answer or was he like value betting the, the, the one possibility although that can pot i was going to say that he could be value betting with like the turn with ace ace queen 10 with not hearts but he can pot that on the river too i i have no idea okay i guess he wanted to I don't know, because uh, he can pot that, but he got me to call, so. Uh, good three bet, bet range, I would bet smaller. So I have two sizings on this board, I go small and pot, and this would go in my small sizing range because it's pretty weak, but we take it down, check call tops, or call pre, flop top set, check raise usually, check call is fine. That's deep especially, but take it down. Sorry, I go through hands pretty fast, just uh, so you can see, he bet 5K. I made it uh, 16 five, he folded. 
call three bet, flop nothing, fold. And that's the end of the session. So after being down 100K early in the session, when my king 10, eight, seven went up against his queen, queen, 10, seven hearts on the king, eight, three heart, heart flop, I clawed back to even by the end of the session. So this was an even session for me. I really enjoyed that. Uh, I hope it was fun for you too. I liked looking back at my thought process at the time, which had nothing to do with theoretically optimal play. I like seeing both of us make those theoretical mistakes as I expected us to, but still seeing a lot of smart play, I think, from both of us, which makes sense because at the time we were, we were very good players for 2010. Hope you enjoyed it as well. If you did, let me know. I have a lot more hand histories like this that I can go back over. Also subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and the other videos I produce, as well as catch some live streams for me in the future. I usually tend to go live without much warning so you, you'll want to be subscribed to see that. As a bonus treat, here is me breaking down some high stakes PLO between two of the very best in the world. By the way, if you don't have my ebook, Poker Mindset Strategy, it's totally free at philgalfon.com. Let's get back into the action. Hey everybody, Phil here. There's a very, very exciting match going on right now between Am So Good and Barry Sweet. In my opinion, the two best heads up PLO players in the world, if I'm not gonna include myself, which I actually don't think I'm the best, but. Uh, I'm, I'm close in contention with them. Very sweet and am so good, both screen names. Uh, we don't know their real names. Are playing at 5,100 PLO, but they're actually uh, cross booking, as it says on two plus two, very sweet posted that they're cross booking six X. So it's actually 300, 600. So people have been watching the match and uh, it seems like Barry's been in the thread posting updates. People are posting hand histories, some of the most interesting hands that they've observed in the match. And so today what I'm gonna do is go through the hands, try to get inside their minds, tell you what they might've been thinking, what I think of their plays, kind of where I think the match might be going. I believe that the winner of this match is the best heads up PLO player in the world until someone proves otherwise. To give you a little bit of history on these players, if you're not familiar, Barry Sweet is somebody who came up in the six max PLO games and then started playing heads up PLO and essentially played heads up PLO until nobody was willing to play him, at which point he went and played eight game heads up until basically nobody was willing to play him. Then he played horse heads up and then he moved to no limit hold'em heads up. And then he had the same level of success. People have stopped playing him at no limit hold'em for high stakes. So Barry's kind of this enigma and kind of freakishly talented uh, Swedish player. Eight, nine years ago, we played some heads up PLO, and I don't even remember who won. It was a short, like we played a couple of sessions. He kind of became known as the end boss after that time. If I'm being honest, when I issued my Galfon challenge, he was one of the few that I was hoping would not take me up on it. And he actually didn't at that point because of scheduling reasons, but I've been in contact with him. We've talked about potentially playing. Uh, to be honest, I'm he's the only player I'm, I would say that I'm afraid of that I feel like I might be a, a big, big underdog against. Am so good, unlike Barry, is a PLO player through and through. And he's been a heads up specialist for quite some time, although I'm sure he's extremely capable uh, of six max PLO. I have actually played against Am so a number of times. We played a lot of hands together and he's exceptionally good. They have a very interesting clash in styles where Barry is more exploitative and kind of takes lines that seem very strange, but he just seems to win. Amso is, seems to be, in my opinion, the most accurate heads up PLO player from an, a GTO perspective. There have been so many times in my play against him where I've looked at a hand and I'm just like, that can't be right, that can't be good. I go look it up in the solver and, and it is. So I've looked Amso's play up really quick and uh, as usual, uh, something that I thought was not a thing is a thing. He's either putting in more hours studying than anybody else or he's better at retaining information than anybody else or some combo of the two. For what it's worth in my play against Amso, he certainly thinks he has the edge. I feel like I have an edge, but the results have been in his favor. So I, you know, I have no evidence of that, uh, of my belief, supporting my belief. So if you were to ask me, I right now would bet on Barry Sweet. That's based on my perception of him just the, the fact that he's won in so many games and beaten the best in so many games as a more exploitative player myself i have a lot of respect for his 
approach to the game. And I think somebody who's who's playing in kind of the weird style that he's playing and having success, there must be something really to it. There's a chance he would be a massive favorite against me. I would play him a little bit because I want to find out. If I were betting, I would bet on Barry Sweet, but I would not count Amso out. So I hope you're half as excited as I am to watch uh, these two great players play. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. All right, so this first hand, we have Amso on the button. He opens the 300, Barry Sweet, three bets. And we had to do a 336 flop. So this is a board on which I would do uh, essentially no C betting. I would check my full range. Let's see how Barry proceeds. He does, well, we don't know what he's doing with his range, but he checks this hand. Amso checks back. And they head to the 10 of clubs, turn. Barry's now betting third pot roughly. So he's kind of leveraging his overpair advantage. I mean, that's essentially all he's doing. He's leveraging his overpair advantage in a spot where Amso checked the flop. Amso raises pretty big. Um, this is a near pot raise. Pot would be uh, 3,500 or so. Um, he's saying that he slow played the flop or he spiked a set of tens. And obviously he could also have some kind of turned draw. Um, so let's see how Barry proceeds. Obviously, because this was an interesting hand, something's going to happen. Um, and Barry actually clicks it back. It's 2,500. Yeah. So Barry clicks it back. And this is kind of a, a perfect example of unorthodox play uh, from Barry Sweet. In, in a lot of cases, like when you're out of position here, you're leveraging your overpair advantage. And when you get raised, your opponent is representing that they have trips or a full house. And so when you have a hand that can beat trips or a full house, you often, not always, but you often want to just call, first of all, to protect your overpairs from just getting run over. Um, so you, you can kind of punish bluffs. But second of all, because most of those hands continue betting most rivers, not all rivers, but most rivers. So this is a very unorthodox play from Barry right off the bat. He clicks it back. Amso calls. So you got to keep in mind when Amso makes a big raise and then calls this click back, he kind of has to have something. Um, could he have, like the weakest he can have is some kind of weird, um, like 10, nine, nine that he made a, that he bluffed with and just doesn't believe Barry. Um, but more likely he's got trips, a boat or some kind of draw. Now, most four, five, seven hands bet the flop. So I think it's more likely he would have a turned draw, uh, whether that's clubs or the uh, like, you know, seven, eight, nine type inner in, inside wrap. But maybe it's, you know, seven, five with not clubs or something like that. Um, but most of the time he's going to have some kind of very strong hand. Um, so they have less than half pot on the river. Barry's going to check. So... <laughs> Okay, so actually like putting Amso on a hand is not crazy. I mean, like basically I know what his value range is. I know kind of what his potential bluffs are uh, here, but putting Barry on a range is really hard because he's played this hand uh, in such a weird way. So he's kind of saying to me either, like he could just have like 10, 10 queen. And he's like, well, I could jam for value, but if I check, it kind of looks like I spiked a queen. So then the Amso is going to shove a three anyways. And if he missed a draw, I can get him in a bluff. So that would make sense to me. Um, it could also been, have been some kind of turn bluff that river to queen. So ace, queen, five, four, for example. Um, but yeah, it's hard, it's hard to figure out what he might have. Uh, Amso is going to shove... And Barry calls. So Barry has showdown value. We'll see if it's a trap or not, or he spiked a queen. And then Amso, I mean, yeah, his value range is trips plus. It is such a weird line that I could see him potentially checking back trips occasionally, but pro probably just shoves. And um, yeah, his bluffs are really kind of what you'd expect. So he actually turned a huge draw. Um, so that makes sense. And Barry had just the top pair on the turn and spike the queen. So the river check makes total sense because you can't get value with queen 10 by betting, but it's too strong of a hand to bluff with because occasionally Amso will have hands like this or Amso might have like the 10 nine nines that you beat. Well, his river play, at least the check is standard, whether you call or not, you know, you, you make a read or you, you get an idea of Amso's range. But the turn, basically the turn clickback is the only very, very 
unorthodox play from Barry. Uh, I can't really analyze it beyond that, but this time it worked out for him. Uh, so in this next hand, Barry's on the button. Amso three bets. Barry calls, seven, three, deuce, two tone, big bet from Amso good. Kind of repping over pair plus flush draw. Um, but of course, they, they, in, th in C bet ranges in three up pots, there's a lot of mixing. So Barry calls. Amso bets small on the turn. I don't know what to make of this. He's kind of saying that he has like a weak draw, a weak pair, like maybe he turned a jack and he doesn't want to check, but he doesn't want to pot. Or he has some kind of very nutted hand that would like to keep Barry in. Um, Barry stays in, he obliges. And Amso checks the river. Barry's going to jam. So, I mean, because this was categorized as an interesting hand, I think we're going to see a call. So, um, so it'll be interesting to see if Amso trapped here on the river with something or just spiked a queen with some kind of weird turn bet or, or, you know, he had a jack and he just doesn't believe because a lot of draws did miss. And this is one of those spots where you'll find some players in Barry's spot just like be way over bluffing because so many draws missed and they bluff with all of them. And then you'll find other players who think to themselves, oh, so many draws missed, so I can't really represent that much, so I'm going to give up with a lot of my potential bluffs. Um, I would assume both of these players are more balanced than that. Uh, Barry actually had Jack, Jack. So this is another unorthodox play. Um, Amso had a hand that kind of makes sense. I would say, I mean, to be perfectly honest, I don't like either of their turn lines. I think Amso has a really good big bet hand on the turn that like you have one pair, so you don't really mind if Barry folds one pair. And you're doing so well against a lot of calling hands, but I don't know, just small betting, I feel like gives them too much of a price. And you still get like, if you're behind, you get raised and stacked still. It's not like you can, it's not like you're deep enough that, that like small betting get, allows you to call and have a lot of play left on the river. So I don't like that bet. And then Barry's call, I don't, I mean, I've never done this. I don't think a solver would do this. On a board that's this draw heavy, just flat the turn with the nuts. Um, especially like when the nuts are top set. Sometimes with a straight, of course, even on draw your board, you, you flat to protect your range there. But I mean, he must be thinking that Amso is really polarized there, which is kind of what I was describing. But I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't really think so. Amso's going to have, even like he'll be bet folding some flush draws. So you are giving a free river to those. Maybe he bluffs enough on those rivers to make it work out, but I don't know. Um, this is a play where to me, both turn lines seem, seem unorthodox. Although, like I said, every time I look up an Amso play uh, and solver, it turns out to be good. I'm actually going to look it up real quick. So I've looked Amso's play up really quick. And uh, as usual, uh, something that I thought was not a thing is a thing. Um, here in vision GTO trainer, it looks like it's, it's rarely checking, um, but then splitting between a big bet and a small bet. And he won a small bet, which is uh, totally solver approved. I would have never, I mean, to be fair, I rarely have small bets on this turn, but yep. Yeah, I mean, he, every time you plug one of his weird plays into a solver, it actually is just a standard good play. So let's see now if ace jack jack ever just calls. Um, with hearts it does. So let's go with no hearts. Zero to one. So it actually is also kind of a thing when you have the ace of hearts only though, um, which Barry didn't have the relevant ace. Uh, he hit the jack of spades. So not the craziest play of all time. Uh, kind of standard play from Amso and from Barry. It's not as unreasonable as I thought. Neither play was unreasonable. And that's why, you know, the winner of this match uh, is going to be the king. Barry opens the button. Amso calls in the big blind. Check, C bet, check, raise, call. I mean, right now, uh, everybody can have a little bit of everything. Turn four. Amso checks. So Amso's saying, you know, I have some kind of, I have some kind of draw that didn't complete. I have like a two pair or a set. And Barry is very clearly saying that he has a straight, potentially like top set uh, with little something else that wants to get more money in against a weaker set and then good river playability, et cetera. 
And so shoves usually going to be a straight or like a, a set that just there's so much money in the pot he wants to end the hand. And Barry calls probably has a straight. Um, so standard from Barry from Amso. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure if I plugged it in, it'd be good. Uh, you don't really want to bet the turn, so check is good. And then when you face that big of a bet, even if, if Barry's bluffing with some kind of, I don't know, 5-4 combo, he does have some outs, so getting him to fold is good. And if you're beat, like like in this case, you can see he has 38% equity against uh, Barry's straight, which is what he's usually going to have. So I think this is good by both parties. Amso wins the first run, Barry wins the second. Next hand, Amso opens the button, Barry three bets, king, king, seven. Barry goes with a very small sizing. This is kind of similar to what I do on these paired boards. And Amso calls. Queen of diamonds. So Barry went with a small sizing. So on a lot of like pair plus flush boards in three bet pots, um, you can even check range, check your full range out of position uh, just because you have so many kind of like tier three hands, like over pairs that just want to get to showdown. And so you you allow that to happen by protecting them with, with your slow plays too. But Barry's chosen to bet here, which uh, is interesting. And Amso raises, which is also interesting. If you're Amso, you, you shouldn't really raise a flush here, even the nut flush. Um, now, could he raise the nut flush to then check back the river and get the amount of money and he wants? Uh, kinda. Um, but I don't think that's going to be a great play. So Amso is representing a boat. In a lot of cases, you just want to continue to slow play a boat and let Barry bet the river before you raise. It's also kind of odd because King seven, you don't really want to raise King seven. So Amso's repping specifically King queen, I think, um, which may or may not want to raise, uh, because you have your opponent drawing dead. So I don't know about this raise. I mean, he's repping king queen. He probably has it sometimes and he probably has some kind of like ace of diamonds plus pair or two pair hand. Otherwise, Barry calls. Um, it's a pretty decent size raise. Um, Barry calls. So he basically has his turn value range minus a few that he's folding. But like he either has a flush or a boat or some kind of weirdly played trips. Check. Amso jams. Barry calls. And let's see him. So Amso is bluffing with queen seven, no diamond. I think it's a, here's the thing. I think it's a good combo to choose because you want your opponent to have a flush when they're value betting, not a boat or, uh, and you don't even want them to have trips, but you want them to have a flush. So having no diamonds in his hand is a good thing. But on the other hand, I don't know if you even need to raise anything. So that's uh, a little questionable, but I, I, definitely a fine play. Barry has the nuts, so a uh, fine play as well, of course. So remember everybody that these are six times the stakes. So when Amso opens here to 300, he's actually opening to 18, 1800. Um, and when Barry three bets to 900, he is actually three betting to 5,400. So these pots are bigger than they appear. Jack five, deuce, two tone. Barry goes with a small bet. Um, I used to have, so I used to have this small sizing on boards like this, but now I just like to use a big sizing like um, like between 1K and 1,200 for, or I should say like 1K and 1,300 even, um, and just bet a little bit less. But I mean, I used to use this strategy and there's nothing terribly wrong with it. Uh, Barry Potts turn. So, I mean, it, there, there, there's not a lot of hand reading to do. There are so many different things he could have here, obviously some bluffs, but his value range is going to be like Queen Jack. It's going to be King, King 10. It's going to be Kings with clubs. Um, stuff like that. 10 on the river, offsuit 10. Barry checks and Amso jams. So Amso is repping a straight. Barry is repping kind of like Queen Jack-ish. Um, and that kind of sums up where they're at now. And I think Amso would shove any straights and probably bluff. I don't think he's going to bluff like a queen or better because Barry can have some turn bluffs that just gave up and Amso can have some like three, four, six type hands or three, four with clubs that just, uh, so I think a queen has too much showdown value, but with worse than a queen and a straight blocker, I could see him bluffing, you know, a fair number of those hands. Um, he does have ace, 10, seven, seven with nut clubs. I think this is a good bluff. 
uh, probably. And Barry actually was trapping with the nuts. So that's interesting. So Barry's flop play, turn play. Um, flop play, I'm assuming that's his just his only sizing. Or maybe he splits, I don't know. But either way, um, small betting that is fine. Checking it is also okay to check call. His turn play is very standard. You could go for a check raise, but I think betting is good. Um, Amso's flop call and turn call are stand, standard. And then both of their river plays is where it gets a little bit iffy. So Barry unblocks a queen, which should make him want to bet a little bit more. He unblocks clubs, which should make him want to check a little bit more. He blocks two jacks, which I guess should make him want to check a little bit more. Um, I tend to usually shove these spots and let my opponent find something to call with. But here, you know, this obviously worked out. Amso, Amso's play, I mean, I said I like it. I think it's got to be okay. Um, you don't really want to have three clubs in your hand. That's certainly a negative. But he doesn't have a three, four, or six. That's good for him. And he's got an ace, which is good for him as well. So got to be a fine play by, I mean, I think it's a fine play by everybody, but River is really interesting from both their perspectives. It's cool to watch them navigate these things. Barry on the button, he's gonna open. Amso three bets. Barry's gonna call, let's see a flop. Small bet from Amso on the straight board. I feel like he bet bigger than this when I played against him on these boards, but oh well. Checks the turn, Barry's going with a big bet. Barry's representing Sometimes he'll have like the queen high straight with something else to go along with it. Sometimes he'll have, it, he's mainly repping king 10. Occasionally he'll have like, uh, obviously they'll have some bluffs, but occasionally he'll have maybe the, the queen high straight with nothing to go along with it. And he's looking to bet fold, but I think that's not really standard on board this draw heavy. Uh, Amso check calls, deuce of clubs on the river, Amso checks. Barry shoves, Amso calls, let's see him. Um, Barry has a very non-standard <laughs> hand here. So, okay, so he's he's facing his jack, six, four, three. He's facing a really small bet. I think it's probably a fold, even to this small bet. And then on the turn, he's got no equity. I don't, I mean, look, Barry is Barry. <laughs> but I don't really like this because like if he wants to rep the queen eye straight, he can still check back and bluff the river. And then that way he can also rep a lot of cards that come in on the river, even though he doesn't have good blockers. Um, this just seems like a lot of money to put in with no equity on a very draw heavy board. Um, so this seems a little suicidal. I mean, jamming the river when you get here this way, okay. You'd, I mean, you'd like to have a club blocker, but it is also hard to be bluffing um, in this spot. So I think he would get a lot of credit. Amso had a flush. Uh, Amso's play looks good all around. Um, I think his flush is too weak to lead. Like he's going to want to lead a lot of flushes on the river, but he's going to want to lead like jack high or better flushes. Uh, six high flush, I think, is a check. So Amso, I think, played this very well. Barry played this very unorthodox. Um, we saw that earlier work out for him. Here we see it not work out for him. Um, but that's kind of what you get, uh, I believe, with, with Barry. Speaking of which, there's one funny element uh, going on. So at some point, uh, Barry posted on 2 plus 2 that he is having a, a winning week. He posted a winning update. Moose Gills responded uh, saying, great job, boss. My dog's daycare made a collage to celebrate the successful week of gambling. And Barry says, let me know if the dog has a favorite PLO hand. I'll three bet it every time I get it in the match. So the whole match. Luckily for Barry, Moose Gills picks a kind of normal hand, like a decently strong hand, King 977, single suited, aka the lucky dog. So that is now the lucky dog. And then later on, um, <laughs> Barry does post a hand history of him three betting King 977, single suited. Uh, which again, it's not a terrible three bet. He C bets and takes it down. And, and then Barry says, I'll add the next hand anyone says and three bet at 100% too. And somebody said ace, eight, five, deuce, uh, single suited. Someone else said ace, five, 10, four, rainbow, ace, ace, ace. And someone else said quad deuces. And Barry goes and says, I'll three bet all of them, sort of. He says, I'll add ace, eight, five, deuce, single suited, ace, 10, five, four, rainbow, and deuce, 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 deuce for now. He says, ace, 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 x is more combos 
than I can count to, which uh, is obviously a joke. He's now three betting these weak hands 100% of the time. On April 13th, Barry goes on to post, said I might have lost a lot of buy-ins yesterday, but the thread hands are still 100% one pots. So the, the hands that people told him to three bet are still winning 100% of pots. He shows uh, his three bet with ace eight, five deuce suited to the eight, uh, taking it down on the turn. And he also posts a graph of what appears to be the full match so far. So uh, this is uh, April 13th. It looks like Barry is down roughly 70K, which is seven buy-ins. Uh, so it's 6X the stakes. That's going to be 40, 420,000, I believe. Uh, so not going great. I'm unsure if Barry is doing this just for fun because he wants to have fun uh, or as kind of a needle, like a sign of disrespect to AMSO. Like I can three bet a bunch of terrible hands and still win, which currently he's not winning. But it might, it might be some combination of the two, uh, but definitely uh, the two plus two community loves it. Let's get back into some hands though. Raise three bet call, 10, eight, three rainbow check, Barry bets half pot, and so pots and Barry shove. So Barry's kind of saying two pair plus. Amso is saying um, kind of like King King Jack nine, um, ace, 10, nine, seven, um, like strong one pair hands, maybe some dry 10 eights. So let's see the hands. Um, Barry has a wrap. These are both a little bit interesting to me. So as Barry, I would have just called the flop and then called basically any turn. It's kind of, I guess, insignificant. And then as Amso, I mean, I'm sure it's solver approved if he's doing it. So uh, I'm not even going to bother looking it up, but it is, I mean, it seems totally reasonable. He's blocking top two, he's blocking top set. He's got two backdoor flush draws and he's got straight draws, yet he has one pair and a lot of turns are gonna be dicey for him to play. Maybe he thinks Barry is betting this board uh, or just like betting when check two a little too much. Um, and I guess given that Amso showed this hand, if the turn were a seven offsuit, Amso might check fold. So maybe Barry's right to get it in on the flop. Uh, Amso is going to win the first and Barry's going to win the second. They will chop it up. All right, Amso opens button. Barry calls King 10, deuce, rainbow. Barry with the check raise. Amso calls. We head to a turn. Barry bets tiny. He's betting uh, one fifth pot. So on the flop, Barry's saying that he has a set or some kind of wrap. Uh, maybe some King 10 with something else to go along with it, but dry King 10, I don't know how often that raises. On the turn, I don't really know what he's saying. He's kind of saying, I have ace, queen, 10. Um, I have like king, queen, jack, 10, although he would three bet that unless it's maybe it's rainbow. Um, queen, jack, deuce, deuce. Like he's saying I have a monster or some weird bluff, I guess. But I think, I mean, maybe this is his small sizing on this board. My small sizing would be more like third pot. And then I would bet third pot with a set of tens, for example, or a set of kings, uh, perhaps, or I might check all that. But um, I don't, basically, I don't know if this sizing is like a vacuum play that in this spot, he just chose to bet this sizing with his hand, or if this is his default sizing in spots like this. But it, uh, to me, it strikes me as a strange default sizing. Uh, Amso calls. So Amso is saying probably not the nuts, although possibly because Barry's play is so odd. And then like two pair, like King nine plus uh, makes a lot of sense. He's always going to come along at these odds. And even like ace, king, queen can come along at these odds. Okay. Queen on the river, very checks. Um, he could just have king, king. He could have the king high straight and he just doesn't want to play a big pot. Or like, you know, feels better off checking and check calling than betting and potentially getting raised. Amso bets half pot. He's repping the straight, obviously. And Barry shoves, repping specifically ace jack, which I mean, ace king jack, ace queen jack, deuce, or something that um, I don't know. I wish he could have Amso calls. We do have a weak ace jack and we have king queen jack. So, very interesting plays here. Slightly thin check raise on the flop from Barry. A, I mean, I don't know what to make of his turn sizing. So, I'm going to just leave it at that. It's a very reasonable hand to bet some sizing on the turn. 
Um, it's just a strange sizing choice. Amso with King Queen Jack decides to just call the turn. I think that's really good. You want to, I mean, when somebody bets tiny, you do want to raise a lot of your nut straights, but the like one combo you would like put into your calling range first would be King Queen Jack, where you block top pair and you have the straight. So I think well played by, well, by Amso and Barry. I'm, I'm not going to say badly played or well played. I don't really know. It's just a weird play. Barry going for the check raise on the river is a little bit strange to me, just in that he does not block any pairs. So Amso is going to have a lot of, you know, King Queen 10 that could call a bet. Yeah, I don't know. Like if, if Barry had Ace Jack King or Ace Jack 10, um, I would like this more, but or, but but blocking none of the pairs is kind of strange, but hey, he got a full stack out of it. Amso's decision against the raise, I mean, the, there's no clear decision either way in theory, so just make a read. Next hand here, Amso on the button, he's opening to 300, Barry calls, queen five five, check, check. Offsuit eight on the turn, Barry with the check pot, Amso is calling. So Barry is saying he has trips plus. Amso, you know, could have some slow plays, but he's usually going to have a hand like queen eight or king king, uh, maybe he turned eight eight. Uh, Barry pots. Amso calls. Let's see them. Barry was bluffing with eight six four four with clubs. Uh, queen five four Amso. So I think the flop check from Amso is kind of unusual. Generally, when you check boats like this, you want to have clubs in your hand so that you, at least one club, so that you're blocking. Like when, if you were to bet now, he's going to get a lot of action from flush draws. He's going to get action from a five. He's going to get action from under pairs to the queen. So usually I don't check this back unless I have a club, uh, at least. And even then I often bet with two clubs and queen five, I always check. Barry's check is normal. His check raise pretty normal as well. Like you want to fold out a hand like, I don't know, uh, ace jack three deuce with a jack high flush draw that played this way. And bombing the river seems okay as well. You're blocking eight, eight, which is pretty key. So I think, um, I don't want to say standard, but kind of standard from Barry and answers flop check is a little odd, but it worked out very well for him. And I don't know if that's his default or if that's an adjustment to Barry Sweet. He's trying to induce more bluffs, essentially. All right, Barry Sweet on the button. Gets three bet by Amso. He calls, nine, five, deuce, two-tone, check, check. Eight on the turn. Amso's potting, which is interesting. This is a board that favors the in-position player, um, although not by a huge amount, but also out of position, you have a lot of just dry over pairs that you want to protect with, with, you know, small bats and checks, but he's going for pot. Barry calls. Uh, everything gets there kind of on the river. Amso checks kind of claiming six, seven or eight, eight. Um, Barry pots claiming a flush. Amso is all in claiming a nut flush, maybe second nut flush, probably not flush. Or one of, or like King of Diamonds blocker, Ace of Diamonds blocker. Barry calls, claiming that he definitely has a flush. And let's see who has what. So Amso with King high flush, Barry with a nine high flush. Nice, sort of thin. I mean, it's not, it's in theory, this is not too thin, but a nice, sort of thin check raise from Amso. And I really like that he used seven, seven blockers because uh, normally if you get to this river and you have, let's just call it for the sake of argument, uh, King, Queen, Queen, three with diamonds, which he would not have potted the turn with, but just for the sake of uh, the example, I think you'd often want to bet because you're going to get called by straights, but straights are not going to bet for you. But now that he blocks two sevens, he blocks the straights really hard. And so going for a check raise is going to get Barry to bluff some Jack 10 combos, um, bluff some, uh, I don't know, some like even five deuce or five eight uh, with a diamond, probably going to bluff. And then uh, value bet some flushes. Here he got Barry to bet call the nine high flush. So uh, well played by Amso. I mean, Barry's play flop is good. Turn is good. River is like I would bet. And then you make a decision against the check raise. Not a big deal. So I'm really excited to see how this unfolds. I have no issue uh, stating that I, I believe that the winner of this match 
Uh, is the heads up PLO king? Um, at least for the time being, that can always change. You know, based on seeing the hands, I kind of saw what I expected. Good plays from both parties. I saw a lot of solver approved plays from AMSO. And uh, I saw a few very non-standard plays from Barry Sweet. But I could kind of guess, well, the, the Jack 6, 4, 3, I can't really guess uh, the logic there. But the other ones, I could kind of uh, get an idea of why he might be doing what he's doing. And uh, yeah, it's going to be really fun uh, for anybody who loves PLO or just loves seeing the, the greatest compete. I recommend you follow along either uh, in the 2 plus 2 thread or watching them on PokerStars or uh, wherever else the, the action is being followed. If you like this video and you want to see more uh, hand review and or updates on the match and or my opinions on how it's gone, let me know and let me know which of those appeals to you more because... Uh, you know, what you say to me is, is going to heavily influence the kind of videos that I put out. So, uh, I appreciate your comments. I look forward to, uh, responding to you and, and reading all of them, and I will see you in the next video. Take care and good luck to these two.